And uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Carton Show. Let's go. Great to have you Let's go here. As always, starting yesterday, at least, that's David Jacoby right there. And uh, still fresh in his pajamas. <laughs> Antonio Cromartie. You, you, like made this, enough, you? you made enough money to wear clothes, you my like friend. You like this, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Those pajamas are more expensive than anything I have in my closet. Yeah, he'll be leaving that behind whether he knows it or not. <laughs> See you tomorrow in my pajamas. Anyhow, pajamas. we got a great show for you as we inch ever so closely towards the start of the 2023 mm. NFL season. By my count, we're nine days away. Right, Let's go! Perfect. Coming up when we get the Detroit Lions and the Kansas City Chiefs. Thank you for checking. I appreciate yeah. that. It is Tuesday, and we start you off, as always, with something we like to call... Headlines! Now, listen, all eyes are on Indianapolis. Not so much because we give a rat's rear end about the Colts. We don't. <laughs> but we do care about Jonathan Taylor. And the Colts uh, put this uh, self-imposed today deadline by uh, 4 p.m. <laughs> to get Jonathan Taylor traded. Remember, he is still on the PUP list. I don't know everybody thinks he's going to Miami, but he has not gone to Miami yet. I want to see him go to Miami. No, I want to see him go to the Bills. I want to see him go to the AFC East because when your Jets signed Dalvin Cook, it started a bit of an arms race, a mm. cold war, a preseason mm. sort of like, this is my roster versus your roster because we can't play in the football field yet. Yeah. And I think that once the Jets signed Dalvin Cook and Taylor became available, I feel like it's the Bills and the Dolphins that really should get him. That's the two locations outside of the – in the AFC, the NFC, the Eagles – they would, he would have the most impact. I don't want to see him go to the Bears. Yeah, listen, Jonathan Taylor is obviously the best available running back. He's well, a rock star, no doubt about it. Uh, and the best offer that we've seen is a second and a fifth. That comes from Miami. Uh, the Colts want more, but I give Miami credit. If nobody else making offers, we're not going to bid against ourselves. 100%. I, I don't see uh, the Colts even getting a first-round pick for him. I know they're trying to add up the points-wise and try to say, oh, it, it, it adds up to this, but – no, I don't see that at all. I think the, I mean, and honestly, I think when you when you're trying to take a guy away from a young quarterback that you have that you're starting that hasn't played a lot of football, right? Now you're it, to me, it's going to be a mistake on that end. But if he does get traded, I think the best fit for him will actually be Buffalo. I think when you look at the Buffalo offense and what they've done, they have James Cook and I forgot the other kid name uh, that the other running back is there. But now you, if you add in Jonathan Taylor to the offense. Now you got a more uh, a, a, a number one running back on the back end yeah. that can run the football. Look, it's here's the reality, and it's kind of what Jacoby said is right. You know, there's a bit of an arms race, a legs race, whatever you want yes. to call it, in the AFC East because all three of those teams keep the Patriots aside. They're not in <laughs> They're the that division. conversation. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> Finally can bury the old yeah, bastard up there. Exactly. What you mean? He got the uh, seat. Uh, relax. <laughs> uh, yeah. He'll be out by week three with a hamstring problem. But, you know, the Jets made their move. They played their yes. card, right? 100. They got Dalvin Cook on the one-year deal. Miami does not have a great running back core. Where, you know, Raheem Mostert is probably their right now running back number one. And the same with Buffalo. So, Jonathan Taylor changes it. And right now, I know I'm saying this totally subjectively as a fan of the Jets, it's the Jets that everybody's chasing right now. And both teams, the Bills and the Dolphins, are behind the Jets when it comes to their running back play. Yes. Okay. When you said behind the Jets, I was you gave me pause. But, yes, in terms of running back yeah, play. Yeah, Dalvin Cook's the, better than what they got. And Hall. I mean, I'd say the tandem of the two of them is, is far and away the best running back group in that division. 100%. You add Jonathan Taylor to either the Dolphins or the Bills, and I think that changes. Now, I remember one little thing. Today is also the day that teams have to get down to 53 men on the roster. So there have already been a flurry of guys being released. One of those guys actually was the New York Jet running back, Donovan Bam yeah. Knight. Yep. Uh, so there will be other guys who are legitimate NFL uh, players who are now going to be let go by today and are going to be picked up right quick. I don't know how many running backs there are going to be, but it makes it harder for the Colts to trade Taylor when there are other viable running backs that teams like Miami and Buffalo might go after. So we'll keep an eye on that throughout the day today. A numero two when it comes to headlines. You brought up Dalvin Cook, Jacoby. So I'm going to have to get you pregnant. <laughs> Dalvin Cook announced yesterday that he joined the Jets not for the money, but for a chance to win a ring. That's what I'm talking about. That's the, st <laughs> that's the truest thing Dalvin Cook has ever said, Crow. 
<laughs> I know you hate the Jets. I know you do. Oh, say no, it. I love my team. Go ahead and listen, say it. Listen, listen. This is what this is my thing on 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 this. Dalvin, like you said, his talent's gonna pay for itself. That's 100% correct. Mm-hmm. This team on paper gives you a realistic look of having a Super Bowl contender. No team. doubt. That's from the offense and that's on the defense well, side. The defense is the gonna defense be better than the offense. Be, listen, the defense side is gonna be great because you have depth at the defensive line, something the Jets has never had yep. in a very long time. So now you have depth. You have good players behind your starters that can go out and go be starters if they was on other teams. So that that helps from a defense standpoint. The thing that I'm only thing I'm worried about is them creating turnovers. They haven't created turnovers. No, they were what top five defense? defense last year, and yet did not create there turnovers. They're in the bottom third of the league. So how can we get Aaron Rodgers the ball with a short end, right. with a short uh, side of the field? So that's what they have to try to do now this year to get the ball back. Look, to the it's the Jets' team. best defensive line since the sack exchange in the early to mid '80s. Yes. When you had Joe Klecko who just got into the Hall of Fame, yeah. Abdul Salam, you know Mark Gastineau, those guys got to the quarterback, right? This team is going to do a lot of that. I can't guarantee it equates into turnovers, but they are going to be one hell. <laughs> I mean, there's good. Listen, you're going to hear this. The New York Jets remind me of the 85 Bears. You're going to hear that a lot. Oh, oh God. God. You're hear God. A lot, yeah, yeah, God, a lot, a lot of people are going to be saying that 80, on this you network. Want, you want the 85 Bears or you want the 2,000 Ravens? Oh, Ooh. 85 Bears. <laughs> None of those all comparisons all are going to happen. Or the 2008 happen. Steelers. 85 Bears. Mm. Um, on the mm. turnover thing, it's hard to create turnovers, and I know you can speak to this, when the other team has a three-touchdown lead and they're trying to run out the clock. You know what I mean? That happens a lot. They're, the other team has a lead, right. so they don't have to throw the ball. They don't have to push the offense, and I think that's one of the reasons, because this is a great defense if people point to the turnovers, but I do feel like a lot of that is a function of them being ahead and playing from behind. But, Craig, I'm going to ask you this question. He's a lifelong Jets fan. Yeah. To hear Dalvin Cook, first of all, reference himself as Dalvin Cook, I always love that. Yeah. To They're say that he's baby. coming to the New York Jets. Right. Because they give him a very realistic chance to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Expectations have never been this high for this franchise. Whoa, whoa. Do you enjoy that? Whoa, whoa. You're damn right I oh, do. Whoa, whoa. Expectations have never been that high? Go back to 2010. Were you on the team then? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but, I would say the, the second year of Mark Sanchez, uh, coming off the first AFC Championship yeah. run, uh, we had expectations. Uh, we weren't sure if it was a mirage or not, or if it was lightning in a bottle. And before that, you have to go back to 99 mm-hmm. with Testaverde and the there Jets uh, coming off the AFC Championship game loss to the Denver Broncos. And then Testaverde blows out the Achilles week one, and the season goes downhill. Here's why I love it. There was a very handsome, bald guy on the radio in New York for a very long time who started a little mantra in New York. And the mantra was, it's just the same old Jets. That was me, the handsome, bald guy that started that. And we've been fighting that ever since. You lived it. You know what I'm talking about. So the fact that you have, not even arguably, the best available free agent running back in all of football this Mm -hmm. offseason, saying the reason... I chose the Jets and not Miami and not Buffalo or anybody else was because I want to win the ring. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> but Chris, think about this. Think about this. They, they have so much talent at every aspect of the game. Yep. When you look at it from the secondary, you look at the linebackers, you look at the defensive line, you look at how talented they are on the offensive line. When you bring Dwayne Brown back, you have um, uh, Makai. At right tackle. At right tackle. You had the running backs with Brees Hall, and now you had Dalvin Cook. You got the receivers on the outside. And now you got your starting quarterback at him, at, at Aaron Rodgers. I think when you look at it, yes, this is one of the most talented teams that New York has had in a very on paper, long no doubt. time on paper. And by the way, later in the show, I'll walk you through how the Jets' talent is starting to tick a lot of people off nationwide. And uh, it's well, it's, I it's, it's really, see that yeah, it's, it's, I uh, take all the meetings. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember that part uh, of the show, Craig. Right? Uh, uh, that's why. <laughs> I go to a different meeting than you guys go to. In the meeting I was in, later in the show. Are you going to go through the Jets there, roster later there is, in the show? There is a the national jealousy. program. It's a national program. There is a jealousy, Jacoby. Oh, a jealousy. Okay. A nationwide jealousy of what my New York Jets are going to bring to oh the table. Oh, my God. A jealousy. Yeah, and I'll give you a case in point. My dear friend Nick Wright picked the Jets to come in dead last because as a Chiefs fan, He's worried. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's, a, the, best, that's yeah. the best 
best sign of it, why you should have confidence. That's when right. people that are fans of, of contending teams put them low. That's right. Because everybody's worried about the jet storm. So we're yes. coming what part of the show we going through the rock? I'll, pick, I'll, I'll decide later on. <laughs> okay. It'll be okay. after 8 o'clock, though, okay. for sure. Good, good, All right, good. let's go to headline number three. We told you this yesterday. When the Dallas Cowboys decided to get uh, Trey Lance, Mike McCarthy was not involved in the conversation. Well, here's Mike McCarthy telling you yesterday, I was not involved in the conversation. I mean, that's what he said. Uh, do we have sound of this or no? It's just it me telling you. It's all good. It's the same yeah. thing. Uh, quote, I was involved in the evaluation, but the actual business? <laughs> nah, not so Hello. much. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Now, Lee, I was just thinking about this. Yeah. I was involved in the evaluation. Yes. Trey so Lance was drafted 2021, am I correct? Correct. That's the only evaluation that he was involved in. That's correct. So, yeah. what other evaluation that you've seen from this season that you was actually involved in that you got into the he, system? He, and as the story goes, it's a pre draft evaluation. He was a pre draft evaluator, That's as all it. coaches are. That's it. Liked him a lot, like a, a bunch of guys did, but uh, that was it. That's Hasn't it. But thought about Trey Lance. Let's also not until forget they him. Trey Lance barely played college football. Yeah. Barely played. NFL football, like what evaluation are you evaluating? Well, which really the big question that that leads to, obviously, then uh, is the trust or the relationship between ownership, you know, Jerry and Stephen Jones' son, and Mike McCarthy. Because if you're going out there and you know when you bring in Trey Lance, it's going to cause an uproar amongst Cowboy fans because it's very easy to read into it. You don't believe long term in Dak Prescott. And you didn't consult the head coach? That's a problem. Well, I, 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 I'll say this. It's not, it's not about consulting. I mean, I think when you're going into a situation and you feel like this guy can probably come in and help for future, I don't think it's about going to consult. I think it's just best option at that point in time for Jerry Jones. Jerry's going to do what Jerry's going to do. Yeah. Because that's Jerry's world. <laughs> but, you know, when you look at it, it's just like when, you're, when a coach comes out and says, well, I was involved in evaluation, but I'm not involved in the business right. side of it. The only evaluation that you set up was the pre-draft evaluation. Right. What more evaluation have you ever done? He has not. Because the my kid hasn't exactly. played. He hasn't played. Right. He played eight games. Right. So it, that's, that's my thing. He should have just been like, Pro, though, I think one of the issues here that people are struggling with, and I think we all get it, yes. but the struggle is that you made a, a personnel decision mm -hmm. and you didn't ask your head coach if the guy you wanted to acquire – fits what he wants to do. I don't care what position he plays, if he's a starter or not. And that's the disconnect in Dallas. But I get it. Jerry Jones is goose in his starting quarterback. And that's all this is. It's it's I mean, you make a good point. It's, it's Jerry Jones needs to be a little better personnel management. He is the boss. He is the owner. Whether or not you've already made the decision to trade a fourth round pick for mm -hmm. Trey Lance, call Mike McCarthy, make him feel like he's part of the process. You know what I mean? Because it's when, simple. when right. he feels like he's from the outside looking in, then he's going to start going through the machinations of his own job security, what the Joneses think about him, and what Dak thinks about bringing in Trey Lance. It's not what you do sometimes, it's how you do it. And I feel like the Joneses could have communicated this to Dak and Mike McCarthy. Look, we do it way. here. That's why we let Crow come in early just to sit down in the office for five yeah. minutes. And, and we, we let him wear pajamas like on the show. <laughs> the but is Crow really going to wear yeah. those pajamas on the show? They're like, yes, well, it's a morning show, so I guess it's okay. Had we known, I yeah, would have Pajamas too. <laughs> we we would have put the story with the Le LeBron wearing his pajamas in the show. You know had we known, I'm not going to wear this all today. Okay? <laughs> you, you see my you, you no see choice. my shirt says this is rude. I'm going to be rude today. <laughs> uh, one more, very quickly. Uh, U.S. Open tennis tournament has begun, and there's already an upset on the women's side of the field. Yeah, I think she's the eighth seed. Yeah. Maria Sakari lost uh, after having a 4-1 lead in the first set. And why did she lose? Uh, it was the aroma of marijuana. See, marijuana is legal here in New York yes, City. And we enjoy it on a regular yes. basis. Hands up. I got you. Uh, and she said, well, she doesn't want to blame the loss exclusively on the weed. It was so overbearing she did. that she went to the chair umpire and said, what can we do about the weed? <laughs> it's like, I just love the idea of the chair umpire up there with the microphone. Just, you know, they put their hand on the microphone. Yeah. Listening. Okay, Maria. Okay, Maria. Yeah. Um, uh, please refrain from smoking marijuana in the stands. Thank yeah. you. So anyway, she lost, and it's the weed's fault. Yeah, it's Crow, any experience with that? A lot of it. <laughs>
<laughs> Why do you forgot the clothes on? Great, right in. The <laughs> All right, coming up, uh, Deshaun Watson has laid down the law when it comes to the AFC North, and he's telling the Bengals and the Ravens and the Steelers it's on, like Donkey Kong. So come get some. Go. Hi, welcome back to the Carton Show. Great to have you here. David Jacoby and, of course, Antonio Cromartie. That guy right there might be the comeback player of the year. Uh, if you're a Browns fan, I know you have to hope that. But Deshaun Watson decided to get a little frisky yesterday at a press conference and talk about when they play the Cincinnati Bengals right out of the gate in week one. You better look out if you're in Cincinnati. Here's Deshaun Watson. Go ahead. You know, we got two weeks or however 10 days to, you know, get that tuned up and, and ready to go. And, um, you know, once September 10th comes around and, and uh, Cleveland Stadium, it's going to be, you know, fireworks. And that's the plan. Um, you know, don't hold anything back and just let it all loose and just go out there and have fun doing it. Another guy wearing pajamas to work, I which is interesting. It. I guess that's the style. I, guess. <laughs> exactly. I, I love it. it. Look, I love it. You know, we talked a lot on the show over the last couple of weeks, even when you're not here, that that might be the best division of football. Obviously, Kenny Pickett had the best preseason of any quarterback uh, this uh, this preseason. You've got the Bengals. Obviously, we know what they are. Yes. you got the Ravens retooled, restocked with all those wide receivers. And you got him. He's the wild card. Oh, yeah. Because if Deshaun Watson plays the way we saw in Houston – the division's got a problem, and I love it because they got a great defense. They got depth at wide receiver, and they got Nick Chubb behind them. Yes. That on paper could be a hell of a football team. 100%. And I, I, I love it that he's coming out. It's going to be fireworks. Yeah, I love that. that this too. rivalry between Cleveland and Cincinnati has always been always been talking trash. So, I, like, for your quarterback to come out and say, hey, it's going to be fireworks, yeah. I'm excited to see because, one, you have a full offseason season for Deshaun Watson to get with his receivers, to be around his receivers, be around in this offense. And like you say, the defense is what it is. Very good. You know, you got, what's, mm-hmm. the, what's the kid name? Is that Ward, uh, the, uh, the DB? I mean, so you, you're looking at what they have up front, what they have in the secondary, what they got offensively and what he can do. And if he returns back to form or even better when he was in Houston, this division is going to be off Look, the Look, I think the Bengals could actually start off the year 0-2. And, and you've got a situation now in Cincinnati yes. where you're going up against a division rival that's got a very, very good defense and does get to the quarterback, right? And you've got your franchise still nursing a calf injury. Yes. So week one, you know, and I know the Bengals are very slight favorites by a point and a half, even though the game's in Cleveland. I would not be shocked. If the Browns win game one. No, I might I might even pick the Browns in that game as we get closer. I haven't heard anything about Joe Burrow. Right. I haven't heard anything Other about Joe Burrow. Other than that, Burr. he looks good. Oh, he looks, he's yeah. always looked good. He walks Joe Burrow. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he can walk. Great. <laughs> yeah. But if they're without him, they could lose this game. And they could start slow, and that could be a problem. And, and I think Crow brought something up because there's a big out of sight, out of mind thing happening with Deshaun Watson. We saw him finish last season. But that wasn't really him. The nope. last time we really saw him, when he was with that Texans team, they didn't win a ton of games, but it wasn't because of Deshaun Watson. Definitely. And he played so well that if he can duplicate 80% of that, this team doesn't just have a chance in the division. Like, this division is wide open. Much like Ooh. the East, there's three great teams, a little gap, and then there's that sort of last place team, the Patriots and the Steelers. But I'd say the Steelers' gap is even shorter than the Patriots between third and fourth of what I expect going into this. Yeah, season. and I guess it's hard to go back three years, but for the sake of Deshaun Watson, you almost have to, right? Because yes. yes. three years ago, his last legitimate full year as a starting quarterback, he led the NFL in yards. Yes, he did. So mm-hmm. that's the type of talent we're talking about. And I'm with him. And I think Cleveland's got to start embracing, kind of like us with the Jets, to be fair, the reality that there's a chance – we're really, really good. Yeah. In a great division, yes. we theoretically are going to be as good as anybody else. I love that. 100%. And that's what I think the confidence. When you got a guy <coughs> as a quarterback that has the confidence like that, that carries over into the locker room. Yeah. And when that carries over into the locker room, that means that everybody's going to back this guy. Everybody's going to walk behind this guy because the attitude that he brings to the practice field and on game day, 
That 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 get it really. Oh, I get my juices going right now. Yeah, see, that? I'm ready to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah ready I'm ready to go, to go now. now but it's just, it just it just gives you an opportunity to go out and say we have an opportunity to go win this game and win a lot of games with this guy. And let's be honest, there's no reason to dislike Cleveland or the people of Cleveland. They're nice, hard, blue collar working people. And I think the NFL is a better league if the Cleveland Browns are competitive and not just a doormat like they've been for all but one year out of the last yeah. 25. It's just. It's, I think this year is setting itself up to be the year of the loser. The Jets, mm. the Browns. You know, you follow what I'm saying? Oh, really, just the Jets and Browns. <laughs> I was trying to think, too. Like, the other bad teams are bad. The yeah, Detroit yeah. Lions. Oh, Ooh. there you go. There you this, go. This might be the year that perennial losers make the run to the Vince Lombardi Trophy, except for one. There's one outlier to this. And, yes, it's the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals. Oh, now, a lot of people think that uh, they're going to tank to try to get Caleb Williams, the star quarterback out of USC. Of course, they have a quarter of a billion dollars committed to Kyler Murray, who's going to miss the first four weeks of the season, plus, plus, At plus. Least. But he's on the uh, pup list. But I've got another team that I think is not so quietly announcing to the world we're going after Caleb. And that team... The Rams. Mm. Interesting. Mm. The Rams. Interesting. Mm. The Rams play in Los Angeles. That's right. Uh, he plays for USC. It's also in Los Angeles. Correct. Yes. Hometown. Um, I think that they've invested so much money, the Cardinals, in Kyler Murray. Can't trade him. I don't. He's an untradeable contract, and I think he's playing for that position for the second half of the season when he comes back. But I could see them sticking with Kyler Murray, and then a team like the Rams. They're not going to have Matt Stafford under center for very long. Not just that. I no, mean, Matthew, not Stafford, that Matthew Stafford's wife came out yesterday, Kelly, who's a great gal, uh, on her podcast and said, look, Matt uh, has not connected with any of his young teammates yet. He doesn't know any of their names. Nobody wants to hang out. Nobody's playing ping pong or wow. Madden. He leaves practice. Every guy's on their phone, you know, insulated in his own little world. I think they're setting us up for a three-win well, season and Caleb Williams. What, what well, I, I want to say I about see that, that. I, can see, I can see that. Go ahead. We've watched Hard Knocks. We've been to training camp. Yeah. We see one jet drive. We see how Aaron Rodgers has sort of created a culture with the Jets, and he has specifically taken time and effort to eat lunch with Mekhi Becton multiple times, yeah. to reach out an olive branch, to take guys you to You assume games. he probably doesn't get a lot of forks in if he's eating with Mekhi. Yeah, but he's there. Yeah. <laughs> <just splitting, laughs> he's sitting up to sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, exactly. but he's, taking, he's taking guys to Knicks games. Like, he's cr creating, a, like, a, a bridge between him and the younger players yes, in that team. Yes, you're right. It seems like Matt Stafford hasn't done anything like that, according to his wife. We're not, yeah. This isn't speculation. Which is, yeah. I want to say this respectfully also, because I, I know Kelly, I like Kelly, and I, I love the Staffords. They're really nice people. Sometimes you got to zip your lip a little bit. Sometimes you don't want to get involved in, and vice versa, mm -hmm. in the spouse's business because Matt Stafford never said this publicly. The Rams haven't said it. And now if I cover the Rams or I'm Sean McVay, I'm, I'm like, whoa, time out. Yeah. You mean that you you don't know your wide receiver's name? Yeah. How's that possible, Crow? Yeah. It's, it's not. Right. <laughs> you are in the room. You're in the office of, office of staff. You say office and meeting rooms together. How you not know a guy? Right. How much time are you spending with these guys? Like, I, I you got to talk to a guy how you like certain things on the on routes. You got to understand that. So to say that he doesn't know the younger guys, uh, I haven't spent. He time actually with them. had his wife create a legitimate Facebook, mm. and that she, she took every <laughs> dude's face and wrote their name under it. So when he goes home, he studies it. Billy, Tyrone, Come on, Will, Come on, Steve. Now. Johnny. That was. <laughs> can can Johnny. Antonio Cromartie name anybody on the staff that's not on camera right now? No. No. Of course not. <laughs> can you? Is that? Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> no, Zach. One other little quick thing. Just on the Caleb Williams thing. I know every weekend was going to be going crazy about whatever he does for USC. You have to remember, we live in a different world now with NIL money. Yes. Caleb's going to make five, six, seven million dollars as the best quarterback in all of football, trying to win a back to back. Heisman Trophy Awards, he has the luxury of saying, I don't want to play for the Cardinals. Go. I'll stay in school. I'll make just as much money. But That's yeah, something you have to take into account as teams decide if they're going to try to tank to get him. But you also got to think, Cardinals could trade that first-round pick, too. Yep. True. 
True. Yeah, I just spent a quarter, a quarter million do- billion dollars on Kyler, Kyler, uh, Kyler Murray. I can trade that pick back. Kyler- Very true. No, that's true, too. Right, listen, we got lots more cooking, including our favorite. Uh, say Tuesday or Wednesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. That's why we're doing <laughs> Yeah, but because we only do it on Tuesdays. And we're going to answer this question right there. Are the Kansas City Chiefs, Nick Wright, in trouble? Yes, they are. We'll explain. Great to have you back here. It is Tuesday. That's David Jacoby right there. That's Antonio Pajama Cromarty right there. <laughs> Certainly. His wife called him during the break and said, dude, what are you doing? Your clothes. Family's got a reputation here in Houston, and you're killing it on TV. Oh. But we appreciate him for being who he is. Time now for <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> for being who he is. Morning topic. Yeah, but. You guys ready to rock? Yeah, let's rock. All right, so, Yeah. The Kansas City Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes, and yeah, they've got Andy Reid, and yeah, they've got Travis Kelsey, but they don't have a top 25 wide receiver, they don't have a top 25 running back, and their best defensive player is still holding out. Ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. This is going to hurt. It's going to hurt. You're talking about not having a top 25 receiver. No, you're talking about having your best defensive player holding out. Chris Jones, obviously, Woo. right. What yeah. are they going to do up front? Very yeah. good question. What are they going to do? You can't score. You got to score a lot of points. They're going to have to score 30 plus, not every week, but a lot of weeks oh, to win. More than, more than 30 plus. When Chris Jones went online and said, I can hold out until week eight because I can't afford it, right. that said to me that he is negotiating through social media, right? And that said to me that they're going to get a deal done because they know how important he is to this defense. I think the, that Chris Jones will be on the field for the Chiefs, maybe not week one, but by week three. I think the top 25 wide receiver thing and the top 25 running back thing is more important than Chris Jones. I see him in uniform for the Chiefs, but they've They've gotten by every year, right? With these sort of like with minimizing Isaiah the Pacheco, position. yes, yeah. and, 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 and Juju Smith, the, the Sky Moore, and the yeah. guys they have. Like at some point, that's going to come around and bite them in the butt. No, I and, agree. and I feel like it's going to happen this year. I believe in the talent of Patrick Mahomes, the genius of, Ed, of, of Andy Reid, and also Travis Kelsey as a weapon. But yes. at some point, running backs and wide receivers matter. Look, I, they're, try, they're really trying to follow the Tom Brady New England Patriot mo- model. No. And, that, and that is, we may bring in one big name here and there, but we don't value anybody more than Tom Brady, obviously. And having him there behind center is going to make everybody better. Right. right. And I think, like, when you look at Kansas City, name the big-time free agent – that they brought in. I'll give you Brown a left tackle. Okay, came coming out of Cincinnati. Yes. Very good signing, obviously. Uh, shores up their offensive line, which they were concerned about. But there have been guys available to them. And I think what you're saying is right, Jacoby, and that is we got Pat, we're good. Almost doesn't matter who you put out there. But it's like this, too, though. You got to think about this. They value their development of their younger players. So when you're looking at it, they're, they're the guys they drafted, they're gonna let these guys play. They have to be. They have to prove themselves. Right. And I think that's what you see from Kansas. Is like, yes, we have Patrick Mahomes, we have Travis Kelce, but we're gonna develop the guys that we have, the younger guys that we have, to make sure that they understand how to play this game and that they can have a connection with Patrick Mahomes. And I think that's what you're seeing from that. But remember, while they kind of stay put talent-wise, and I look, we all agree Patrick Mahomes yes. is the best player that maybe we've ever seen, so he does bring all boats up, right, high tide. The reality is that half a dozen other AFC teams have gotten better. So whatever the gap was between Kansas City and everybody else, if it was this, now it's this. How frustrating is it going to be when they turn Justin Ross into a great receiver? Like, how frustrating yeah. is it going to be when they do it? Like, like that's, we, all we hear in the preseason is Justin Ross is amazing. Justin Ross, if they do a Pacheco, and then they have Justin Ross, and they continue to do this, I might be wrong. Maybe they don't need to bring in a top 20 running back or receiver because the system and Mahomes is that good. But I think this year puts that to the test. Yeah, no doubt. At the same time, as Joe I say, I always, it's like we had Tom Brady. When people got better, yeah. it was like he thought that gap was closing. That gap never closed until really Tom Brady left. Yeah. So it's just and like. And then it shut quick. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 so that's what I mean by yeah. you, you still have to beat 
Patrick Mahomes. All right, let me go to the second one here. Yeah! LeBron James, a <laughs> uh, quick editor's note. We've been three days without mentioning LeBron James. We have to mention yes, his name. The Therefore, contract. we're going to mention his name right now. Yeah! <laughs> LeBron James is a top five uh, talent of all time. And yeah! LeBron James is going to have a statue in three cities because he's begging for it. Deserve but it. my man still wears pajamas to bed. Here's the video. Check this out. This is arguably the greatest basketball player alive today, and that's not stylish. I'm sorry. I know you guys have a thing. When I say you guys, I mean athletes, where, you know, you want to be free in the clothes you wear, but my man's wearing a matching top and bottom pajamas. There's nothing wrong with that. I have matching tops and bottoms at home. I'm at home. Yeah. Relax. Okay, you have in my home. <laughs> okay? Like, it this grows. is what we do. Woo, First of all, I love LeBron and I defend LeBron at every chance I get, but yeah. I can't defend him here. Do you know why? Because comfort is key. That doesn't even fit. It's, it's too fit. small for him. It's because he was comfortable. It's not. Hey, look at how look how short the pants are, yeah. how tight they are. <laughs> if you're going to wear ridiculous clothes around the house, they should feel good. Or they video probably tape. do. That, or you, don't, that. you don't know what thread count us on those. <laughs> oh, I can tell from the fabric. I can tell from the fabric that's not comfortable. Right, oh, that's very not comfortable. comfortable. I guarantee you. On to the next one. As you know, USC uh, played a football game this past weekend and won big. Uh, a, a blind USC fan bought a ticket to the game. And look where they sat, this kid. Uh, watch this. Uh, th that's the highlight. Uh, that's Caleb's best play. But d you can't. I mean, <laughs> you can see one you, you, part of the end zone. Like, can't even see the you, full end zone. You can't see any part <laughs> of the field. Okay. Really? Here's my thing. Why does my man just move down though? Like well, he took that he picture on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Like you can just move down and get a better view. Yeah, so he bought a ticket. Ugh. Tickets, I'm sure, are expensive because you're seeing you're the best college player on the planet play, but you can't see the game. So I'm not sure if StubHub funded him, his money or not, but it does remind wow. me of a story. When I uh, was a broadcaster in Philadelphia and covered and traveled with the Philadelphia Eagles back in the Ray Rhodes and Rich Kotai days, there was a blind gentleman uh, who is a former Eagle. And when they brought him up to the press box, they always had a seat for him, and it was like that. And we were all like, we know the guy's <laughs> blind. Put him in a better seat. so disrespectful. Put him in a better seat. Put him in, the Put him in a better seat. seat. Yeah. So it became a big, big story how the Eagles mistreat the blind, and they ultimately improved the guy's seat. But that's a wow. true story. They should have. Yeah, yeah, I'm you're really, wow. you're really, you're really a man of the people. That's I tried right. for that, didn't you? You fought for that. I did fight for that. Yeah, Look, they, they, they caught the carton club. I was at a Super Bowl now. once where they had a, a, a guy again who was uh, seeing impaired. I'm yeah. not sure if he was 100 percent blind. And yeah, and there was a big whatever like column, right? I am not BSing you. They sat him like this. That's, that's not right. <laughs> they that's sat not right. right behind that's not right. Wow. Then, Wow. He can smell his own breath. I can't, I can't even laugh. <laughs> that's, not right. even, that's not right. I can't even uh, laugh. Move on. <laughs> Let me give you one more. Uh, you know, Cleveland thinks that they're going to be a, uh, a playoff team this year, and they are cutthroat right now, which is a whole different ballgame in Cleveland. There's a guy named Michael Dunn mm. who uh, was trying to make the Cleveland Browns roster, and it was his birthday yesterday. And the Cleveland Browns, to acknowledge his birthday, Put out a little uh, social media oh, clip right there. Nice. Happy birthday, Michael Dunn, which is great, right? That's awesome. And then they cut him. No. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> they, just, they, just, they did the Ooh. same thing, but they oh, put no. a comma after what? Michael, and they changed the N to an E. They're like, Michael Dunn, yeah. Dunn, I'm Michael gonna, Dunn. Yeah. yeah. They, the, the Browns social media team put that out. Wow. Happy birthday to one of our own, Michael Dunn. And I'm not making this up. About two hours after the happy birthday post went out, the, uh, they went and sat down with him and said, we need your playbook, we need your laptop, wow. we need your phone, and we need the jersey because well, we just we cut you. Did, wait, wait, happy, happy birthday, birthday Happy birthday. But did, did they take the post now? <laughs> no, 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 they didn't. No, no, they didn't. I'm rooting for him. I want him to end up on a roster. I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep an eye on Michael Dunn's career. Well, maybe they forward. put him on the practice they squad. Him, there you go. Yeah. Right. What practice squad back. guys make, what, 50 grand a year? I'm thinking of something like that. Is it less than that? No. It's more than that. Is it more than that now? Yeah. How good. much does a practice squad guy make? Make about 110. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, look. Make oh, 100 grand. Hey. Yo, you, know, you don't even have to do anything? Hey. That'd be nice. That's well, a good game. I can't say they don't do anything. They're there. 
90% of the time, they're just going to get to play the games. I'm being told now that practice squad players can make up to 200 grand. It's oh, 200? Well, I got to tell you, when I what? covered the NFL I, on a daily basis. I'm ready to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I, no joke. In the mid-90s. They don't let you wear pajamas, though. <laughs> they, made tw- they made 500 bucks a week yeah. in the mid-90s. Yeah. That's all it was. So now they're making a couple hundred grand. Fix that hammy, and you uh, can maybe be a practice squad guy. Yeah, I'm cool. All right, coming up, we got first in football. And uh, it's a good question to ask because people in New Orleans think the answer is yes. Now that Derek Carr is there and you hope Thomas is healthy, can the New Orleans Saints not just win their division? Are they a legitimate threat to make a run? We'll get into that with Crow right after this. Now we're going around the diamond. We're going to take a look at some of the news of Major League Baseball. That is Scherzer. Yeah, screw him. On the take, that off, take that off the screen now. You're, this you're is not the only person in New York who feels that way. For some reason, they put up a video tribute on the Jumbotron in City Field. And here was the Mets fan reactions, not unlike Craig's. Boo! <laughs> you can't even hear it. It's what? so stupid. Why did they do this, Craig? Because the New York Mets being uh, clowns. Why? Because that's what the Mets are. They're a clown organization still. Uh, it makes mm-hmm. absolutely no sense. It's the same organization that after getting abused by Chipper Jones for the better part of two decades, put out an appreciation video when Chipper Jones retired. It's embarrassing. Matt Scherzer pitched three important games out of the 40 games total he pitched for the New York Mets, and he lost all three of them, including a wild card start last year. Good riddance to Max Scherzer, and the New York Mets should be better than that. That was a strange occurrence on the diamond yesterday, but nothing happened. It'd be on like the, the New York diamond. Yankees putting out a, uh, a a thank you video for Carlos Rodon's Ooh. performance this year, which stunk. <laughs> Ron Acuna. Oh, how about just let's do the great moments of Aaron Boone's managerial career this year? <laughs> and I love you, Aaron. You know I love you. <laughs> stupid. You That's so stupid. You good? You good? So stupid. Moving on. It'd be like the Chargers having an appreciation day for Nate Keating, the, the field goal kicker, who missed three kicks to advance you guys to AMC championship games. Wasn't Nate Keating. Who ball. was it? Marlon McCree. Whatever. Loser. Marlon McCree fumbled the ball with six minutes left in the game with two running backs averaging over five yards. Marlon McCree was the one that lost us. You and Marlon McCree still friends? I don't talk to Marlon. I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, moving on. Ronald Acuna yeah. is minding his own business, just playing baseball. He's and, good, um, Fan runs on the field and oh. snuggles him. This, what? I understand if you streak and you run around or you want to get a high five or something, but the oh. it's the snuggling fans. A tandem of fans ran up to Ronald Acuna to snuggle him in the outfield. But why did he fall like that? <laughs> he got, he got, <laughs> I don't know. I, there was a guy laying behind his legs. He got pushed over the guy backwards. Oh, but uh, I got to tell you, that is a terrible job by a security, security work that kid yep. was. Are they in cahoots or did one fan run out there and another fan just took advantage? You have to situation? assume that they're probably in cahoots. Like, you go right, I'll go left. But, but that team, two people acting crazy is way crazier than one person acting crazy, though. Yeah, yeah, twice as much, right? Yeah, it's just like someone being like, hey, do you know what we should do? We should run out there and snuggle a cunha. Yeah, but I, I'd be the guy no. that would say, you go first. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, probably, on three. I probably would have swung on yeah, one of the fans. That, I'm not going to lie to you. Right. Yeah, you get the tattoo first. I'll go second. Just, uh, make sure the guy's not shaking, right? No, but that's actually, we're laughing that's about dangerous. it because nothing happened. And, it's and Acuna's fine, but that's got to be, especially in baseball, like, that's, that's at least dangerous. in football, you guys have helmets on yes. and equipment on. You know, they're exposed. And while the guy obviously is a fan, a deranged fan, and wants to hug him and touch his idol, which I'm sure what this story is, yes. that's scary, man. You yeah. out and that's a crazy. terrible job by state the, the security. Is, so the fan wants to hug the player. Security shouldn't be hugging the fan. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? It's just like right. Security should be a, a little more serious about yeah. removing the fan from the player. Yeah. But, you know. It's like a you lot gotta, of love. You got to drop the fan. I yes. don't care you're having if you got to punch him. Gotta that fan's got to get hurt. And you have it's, it's, just point, it's just a player safety. Right? It's, that's what it's all about, the player safety. Where's security? Where, yeah, it's a bad going? job. How does security? a guy get that close and be able to touch a, someone? I do as like a, that one security guard at the bottom. He, <laughs> he Jeff Van Gundy'd him. <laughs> he he tried to grab his legs and pick his legs up. <laughs> when they review the tape. When the security team reviews the yeah, tape like a football yeah. team does, it's not going to look good. Let's move on to football. It is now time for That's first and football going through 
Four football stories. The first one is this. We have wide receiver for the Chargers, Mike Williams. And they have this to say, he said, about Kellen Moore, new offensive coordinator. He's young, knows how to get us the ball, and how to move us all around, getting everyone involved. He does a good job of putting us in certain spots so the defense can't key on us. Talk about the wide receiver group. They've got Keenan Allen. Yeah. They've drafted Quentin Johnson. Yeah. They've got Justin Herbert, Crow. They've got the receivers. They've got Kellen Moore. They've got the quarterback. Is this the year they get over the hump? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I'm just being serious. Uh, Chargers have always had the mo- one, one of the most talented teams in the NFL. Mm, We've never been able to get over the hump. And that's just, I feel like, I don't know if, if, we're, if we're cursed or whatever it may be, but it's just like we're never able to get over the hump. Um, I, I think what Kellen Moore is doing, what Kellen Moore brings, he's young, he's, he's vibrant, he can, he can relate to all the players. He's played in the league, ha- had some, some, some sort of kind of success through college football also. But it's just like when you look at him, I think his, his offensive mind and what he can do for the players and where he can rely on them, put them in certain situations where it doesn't give defense keys to key on them or if they're getting the ball or not. Because now I can move all my judges around from the running backs to the receivers to my tight ends and get them more involved into the passing game. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I can see where the success can come on offense, but the biggest key is going to still be on the secondary part and, and on the defensive part. Look, they they, they brought that. Kellen Moore in for the same reason the Dallas Cowboys let him go. And that is allegedly he likes the deep ball, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And that was the knock on Kellen Moore, which I thought was just a, a red herring in Dallas because that was not Dak Prescott's problem. problem. His problem was throwing like the little 15-yard outs and dig routes. Uh, you've got an all-world quarterback who's got arguably the best arm or one of the best arms for sure yes. in all of football. So you've got legitimate studs at wide out, guys who can get deep. Yeah. You've got a quarterback who can make the throw. And you've got an offensive coordinator who likes to throw the ball deep. That's why a guy like Mike Williams, that's why Keenan, I'm sure, is in love with it as well. Yep. We're going to have chances for big plays down the field. And the more big plays you have, the less risk you are of getting hit coming across the middle or throwing little dink and dunk passes. So well, well, I get it. Not only that, but the big plays set up the passing game, too. I'm going to say the run game, too. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now I can open up my run game. I have Austin Eckler and those guys, uh, Isaiah Spiller and all those guys. So it's just like understanding that is if I can get the ball down and feel my play action game, my run game is going to open up a little more where I can take more shots, but also it's going to set up. My run game. I, they're going to be a fun team to watch because yes. they got the quarterback, right? And if you have a, a, like an old Air Coriel type of mentality for your offense, I'm not saying they're going to win 15 games, but they're going to be a fun team to watch for sure. Definitely. I can see this. I can see this Chargers team going either way, and that's yeah. what's so much fun about. Well, look, the head coach is also on the hot seat, right? 100%. You've got an all-world quarterback. Just gave him all the money. You've got healthy wide receivers now. You got to win. We all know what happens. At some point, you got to win. We all watch that game against the Jets. Yes. And if you're not on the hot seat after that, then I don't understand what. Well, my thing is, is and it wasn't honestly the offensive fault. It was already up by 20 some points. Right. You got to win every game. You have 28 nothing. And Staley's a defensive coach. My head coach, defensive coach. There you go. Moving on. In the NFC, we all consider three teams to be contenders. The Cowboys, the 49ers, and the Eagles. Well, the Saints want to be part of that conversation, and Saints GM Mickey Loomis says acquiring Carr puts them in that conversation. Let's listen to GM of the Saints. There's always that decision about, you know, tear down, rebuild, all those kinds of things. And, look, I just feel like, and I felt like we've had a good team. So I just feel like, you know, defensively, we've got a very good roster. Offensively, we've got some weapons, particularly with having, uh, you know, Mike Thomas back. Uh, and healthy, and, and um, so we've got an opportunity. Look, it's that's why they acquired Derek Carr because the division sucks. Mm. So you have a chance. You now automatically have the best quarterback in the division. But remember this: you're asking Derek Carr to do something he's never done in his career, and that's win a playoff game. He's been to the playoffs only a single time in his career. I love Derek Carr. I think it's a great signing for the Saints. I think they win the division. So by default, they're going to have a home playoff game. And then you roll the dice because who knows, right? Right. Alvin Kamara suspended for the first three games. That's an issue. But by the time we get to... You know, Columbus Day, Thanksgiving a month later. I think the New Orleans Saints are going to be comfortably ahead in that division because no, they have a quarterback. 100%. And like you said, he's the best quarterback in that division. And the only and it ain't close. proven quarterback yeah. in that division. So when you look at it, I mean, he has the weapons on the outside. You have Alvin Kamara coming back after, after Three. In, in, week, in week four. Yep. Um, and you still have Jamal Williams, who's one of the, to me, <laughs> still one of the top, one of the, a good running back that can add, and add value to this 
to this team also. But you get Mike Williams back. You have a young uh, receiving core. Uh, the defensively has always been stout. Especially but stop for a second there. Like Michael Thomas, who you're talking about there, hasn't been healthy in three for years. years. No. Now, if he's healthy, if, big if, right? Yeah. It's a different offense because that guy's as good as anybody in the league. 100%. But he has not been healthy. So no. that's why sometimes we get a little carried away when we look at, all right, here's the depth chart. Oh, Michael Thomas. Woo! When's the last time he played a full season? Yeah, three years ago. Hasn't. Right. That's and I crazy. think that it really starts and ends with what you started with. It's the division. They have it's a division. weak division. This yeah. is the, if they were in any other division in the NFC, they are not favored to win. But because they are in this trash division, they have an opportunity to take a risk and bring in Derek Carr because, like you said, get a home playoff game, you're in the Dome, who knows anything can happen. And look, the only dominant team right now, for me at least, I know a lot of you think Philly is, and maybe they will be there to me like 1A, is San Francisco. And let's be fair about San Francisco. There's an expectation that Brock Purdy is as good as he was. And we don't know if he's going to be as good yeah. as he was because now he's got to do it for 17 weeks, not just five or six. Get to Brock later right now. It's time to go to third and football. And it is Ron Rivera saying this about Sam Howell, who you may have forgot started week 18 last year for America's football team, whatever they're called. I kept saying, bleep. If I would have known this, I would have played him sooner. When you what? only have so much time to show it, it's hard. So Ron Rivera is saying, whoa, whoa, who's this Howell kid on my football team? What? He's good at football. I should have played him earlier. Think about the guys he did play Heineke. last year. No Taylor Heineke slander. All right. No Taylor Heineke, Heineke slander. I mean, think about who was the quarterback, Carson Wentz and Stop. Taylor Heineke. At no point in, in practice were you like, Hey, hey, who's that guy? Just for us and giggles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see what that kid can do. Who's, who's, who's number 14? And by the way, if you don't know if the kid's any good, <laughs> who does? To? Who does? Who does? It's almost like he discovered <laughs> him week 18. Like, who, who is that guy? Who's that guy? Who is he? Now, like you said, he only had the one start last year. And, you know, his numbers are irrelevant. It preseason was an looked good. He looked yeah. good in preseason. But, like, the, like, Ron Rivera's a guy coaching like... He's not worried at all <laughs> about his future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you fire me, great. I got enough money in the bank. I live a pretty simple life. If you don't fire me, I guess I'll come back and coach. Yeah, like, yeah, he's like, talking He's talking like a guy that just doesn't give a rat's for <laughs> and I And, I, and I, I love Coach Ron Rivera. Everybody yeah. loves I, him. I love him to death. A great dude. Uh, a, coach, a coach of man. Treats you like a man. Uh, I just didn't get this. <laughs> I did. I did. And, and, and he just did his own yeah, but. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 didn't, I, don't, I didn't understand it. Like, how you do not know how this kid is. You still right. have a game practice. And to be fair, it's, the first going it's, to it's not asking a lot Can we just for the quotes to know. Can we put the quote back up? I want sure. to enjoy that again. I, I really, because now that we've talked about it a little bit, uh, I like it even more. I kept saying bleep. If I would have known this, I would have played him sooner. If only I would have known that. <laughs> when you that. only have so much time to show it, it's hard. You know, it's, it's hard. Almost like, it, it's know. almost like know. if Sam Howell was like the water boy last yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, I just didn't know. Just one okay. day a ball was in his direction. I, 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 one hand, we had a receiver. I might have lost a word because I, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. I don't even know what to say because you're a head coach. And you don't know who you guys are? Yeah. Craig makes a good like, point. You say that when you really don't care. Right. Like, the owner is right. reading this quote being like, you didn't know yeah. that he was good at football? Yeah. And I'm paying him to play football? Josh Harris right now is going, okay, new coach. Yeah. Check that box. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> Josh Harris. It's great. But there's, there's, there's something charming about that level of honesty. Yes. Right? Yeah. Even though if I'm a, if I'm a red or excuse me, a commandeer, a commander, what is it? A <laughs> commandeer. You're right. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. a Washington football team fan, I'm like, what did what did what 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 did he say? <laughs> no. Because here's you gotta take it now I'm play to the next step. How do I know that there's not a better running back on the roster? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a better wide receiver. Somewhere Carson Wentz is like, this guy was accidentally starting me a quarterback yeah, last like, year. Oops. Didn't okay. know we had Jerry okay. Rice on the roster. My uh, bad. We're going to fourth in football. We oh, argue often man. at this desk about how significant 
preseason failure or success is. Yes, we do. And, and we Doug Peterson frequently on Peter, Doug Peterson said, depending if the Jets are involved, Doug Peterson said, let's not read too much into our 3-0 preseason because, well, he'll explain. Obviously, the wins and losses are are a big part of it, but it's not. that's not everything. You know, there's some of that can be a little misleading. Um, you know, I think I think if we look at the first unit offensively and start there, I think there were five possessions this preseason, two of them in turnovers, you know, a couple of touchdowns, uh, things like that. So it wasn't as clean as maybe you would like. I love it. I, I love that, it. That's I love yes. It. All that is is the old school tough love uh, dad it's kind sorry. of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like you were 3-0, and all good. Again, the, the results, may, maybe they don't matter record-wise. You know they don't. But you've got your quarterback five days ago saying, I think I can throw for 5,000 5, yards. 5,000 yards. And it's going to be a special year for our offense now that Calvin Ridley uh, gives them wide receiver yes. depth. So if you're Doug Peterson, you're also keenly aware that the first half of last season, we were 2-6. and six. Mm. And then we went 7-2. and two. And we're not sure, maybe, which of those two teams we are. So you want to temper everything with, just relax. We're good. We know we're good. Mm-hmm. But let's relax a little bit. And it's tough love. That's all it is. Yeah, it's, all, it's just tough love. But at the same time, like he has to understand. And what he's trying to get his players to understand, stop reading the clippings. Yes. That's yep. what he's basically doing. Stop reading your own on your own clippings. About We're a lot to win the we, division. Listen, the only thing we have to do is go out and go be who we are. Go out and go win football games. But at the same time, like you said, he had five five series with his starting, with his starting ones. Two touchdowns, two interceptions, and I think they punted it on one. Mm-hmm. So I, when you look at it, it's, it's yes, it's not what you want. You want your offense to click more, but it's like I cannot give these young men the the evaluation I really want to give them. I want to give them the understanding they still have to put in the work every single time I touch this football field. Start reading your own clippings. Let's go out here and do the work and let's go play football. And remember this, the Eagles, the Bengals, and the Vikings were winless this preseason, yes. and they're all most likely making the playoffs this year. Yes. So, let's see. You don't have to, ooh, we were 3-0. and oh. That fans anything. should celebrate that because that gives fans uh, the feeling of, we might be good this year. We might be really good. That's more about the fans yes. than it is about coaches. Absolutely. Is that it? Is that it? Fourth of football? Well, that, was, that was fourth of football. That was fourth. What, what are we doing next, Craig? I don't know, because I felt like yesterday you had a second fourth of football. <laughs> there's a fifth. There was a flag in place when we went to fifth in football. We wanted We're to get the first. Throwing flags off. <laughs> I, got, I, got them off I got them offside with the hard count, like Aaron Rodgers. <sighs> All right. Coming up after, the, after a very quick break. Like, look, you can run to the bathroom, come back to your kitchen, and we'll be on your television. I promise you that. We've got the latest. Stay in your pajamas like Crow Marty. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay in your pajamas. we got the latest on Jonathan the latest the fans watching. <laughs> Just go to break. You're wearing Stop. the same thing Antonio is. <laughs> Welcome back to the Carter Show. It is time for headlines. We start with Jonathan Taylor, currently still a cult. We all expect that to change. They put a deadline on today, Tuesday, where Taylor needs to find a trade for himself or the Colts need to find a trade for him. It hasn't happened yet. Expect it to happen today. Craig, what would be the most impactful team for Taylor to join? Well, before I give you that, just because they set a deadline doesn't mean there is a deadline. Well, there's the like, pup implications. We've yeah, like, all the Colts really have to do today is take him off the pup list so he's eligible to play in week one, and then you extend the amount of time you have to trade him where he can help another team starting in week one. So I know, as you said correctly, that there is a 4 o'clock or end-of-the-day deadline today for them to do a deal but, you know, they set that up. Self-imposed. Yeah, so as long as they take him off the pup list so he's eligible to play, if you think there's a team other than the Dolphins, who allegedly, we don't know for a fact, have offered a second-round pick and a fifth-round pick to get him, and you think there's another potential bite on the hook, you take him off the pup list, and you play it out another week. Season doesn't start till a week from uh, Thursday, so th- that's one aspect to it. I think what you said an hour goes right. I think... The Bills make a lot of sense. I think the Dolphins make a lot of sense. And I'm going to give you one more. And I say this every time. There's a quality free agent available or a guy available via trade. Kansas City. 
Oh. Like, I'm not there saying they go. would trade him to Kansas City. Maybe they wouldn't. But if I'm Kansas City, why wouldn't I want to trade a first-round pick, which is going to be 28th, 29th, 30, you know, bottom of the first round, the first to go get a franchise running back, which only makes me a damn near unbeatable offense. Ooh. I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about that either. I like that. Craig, That's good job, buddy. That's good job, buddy. Go, go, go. See this here. I got this here. I got this here. See on the wall. Wow. Yeah. That's what I got there. Hey, you know show what? the wall. Show yeah, the wall. Show the wall. Show the wall. Show the wall. <laughs> yeah, and I'm saying that also as a diehard fan of the Jets who does not want Jonathan oh, Taylor course. to wind up in South Beach or in Orchard Park because it makes it more difficult, of course, for the Jets to win the division. But KC makes a lot of sense. KC does make a lot of sense when you're thinking about it. It's, you know, the run game they, it came on late into the playoffs. But now you, if you had a guy like Jonathan Taylor in that backfield along with Patrick Mahomes, having Travis Kels, having Justin Ross and oh, all those stupid. guys on the outside, that gives, whoo, my goodness. Now, <laughs> to be fair, running game. Kansas City has shown no interest no. in Dalvin Cook. Not even a no rumor. Not even thus a far. rumor. Right. It doesn't make a great sports television. It's great and sports I television. You, I would tell you something else. If you're Kansas City and you go out there and you make a trade for Jonathan Taylor and then sign him to uh, an extension and Chris Jones doesn't get signed, maybe that's a problem for them too. Well, that's, that's one of the interesting aspects about Taylor is if you are trading for him, you're sort of implying that you are then going to sign him. You're not going to continue to tag him Agreed. with the Colts have, yes. which is something more to consider than should I give up a pick for this guy? Is should I give up a pick for Taylor and then sign a deal? Right, because it's not just money. Like when the Jets got Dalvin Cook, it was just money. Yeah. He didn't give up any yeah. draft picks to get him. He was a free agent. You're right. If you're going to give up draft capital, and we do value second-round yes. picks uh, a lot, you, the idea is that we are going to extend Jonathan Taylor. Whether it's a year or two, we're going to extend him so we get value for value. That's exactly. right. Absolutely. 100%. Right. Exactly. Second headline. You mentioned him. Dalvin Cook mm-hmm. is on the Jets. He explained why he's on the Jets. He said, yeah. quote, he wants to my win. talent was going to pay for itself. I know the worth of Dalvin Cook. Here's the part I like. I wanted to go to a team that was suited to win right now. And I'm trying to go get a ring. That's right. This, yep. The only thing that has changed on this team, besides some receivers, is Aaron Rodgers. And it's taken this team from, eh, well, maybe we'll make the playoffs, to free agent signing there to go get a ring. Look, think about it. He was he was considering Miami, uh, too, as the quarterback. He went to a team with a better quarterback. That's not up for debate, right? Uh, and now the question is, do they give him the best chance to win? Well, as far as we know, there's only two or three teams that even express an interest in signing him and giving him what's he making eight million bucks this year. Uh, so from that standpoint, he you can't argue the fact that yes, he got a lot of money for one year, but of all the teams that express an interest, the Jets are in position more than any of them to make a run because they have Aaron Rodgers and what could be the best defense we've seen in a long time in the yes, NFL. 100%. Not only that, but I just think, like you said, you look at the whole entire roster from top to bottom of the, of the Jets. They're all the most, one of the talented teams right now all the way Can around. Can you say that again? Yeah. I didn't hear you. I'm one sorry. of the most <laughs> talented teams. Top to bottom. From top to bottom. Offense and defense? Offense and defense. The Special teams? teams? Special teams. Who's this? What team? New York Jets. Oh, oh come on, right. What about, head, what about head coach, though? I, I love Tom. That's that's my guy. Oh, that's your I, guy. I, I love him. I love. Oh, oh. I love look at him. Craig Dickerson. Tell, tell Craig but more. I just, I just I just like his one, one his demeanor. Doesn't get too positive guy. Positive guy. Understands what he's looking for. But you got a guy from like I said has a roster from top to bottom. You add Dalvin Cook into that mix. Now you're looking at a roster that has the possibility of winning a Super Bowl, not just making it to the playoffs, but also winning a Super Bowl. And that is going to come into it, and I see how they go and how it's going to play out. How Andrew, how Aaron Rodgers handles the pressure. If the offensive line is not doing well, can he get the ball out quick? Our receivers going, to, everybody's going to be on the same page. Yeah. that's going to all correlate together. And the defense, I'm not worried about. You got the depth on the defensive line. You have some good linebackers. As I with uh, on the on, and also on the back end, you have everything that you know on the back end. So I just think. Talent and wise on paper, you have everything you need. Now I just got to put it together and put it in. Now remember, play. Uh, just going back to Jonathan Taylor on the heels of, of talking about Dalvin Cook, it gets harder to move him because guys are going to be released by the end of the day today. Yes. You know, the New York Jets cut down, uh, Bam Knight, 
who was a productive runner for them last year because they got Dalvin Cook and you drafted the kid Izzy, who's uh, going to start the year on the injured list. But the reality is that there are other guys who are legitimate NFL players are also now going to be available. But the mere fact that a high-level free agent <laughs> not only chose the New York Jets – but chose the Jets because I can't believe I'm sitting Get a ring. This. Go ahead. It's almost like I'm sitting at the U.S. Open enjoying myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's almost like the fact that he went to the Jets because his word's not mine. Hey. He wants to win a tournament. And he doesn't oh. want to win. And he wants to win. No. Right now. Right now. <laughs> it's amazing. Right now. Sorry. Dude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you stay close to me, kid. I got you. <laughs> That's what this guy has done. Oh, my guy. Let me go more my positive. Guy. Greg, let me yeah. go more positive for the Jets. Oh. Brees Hall was so electric. Yes, so electric yeah. last year. Running back for the Jets, uh, tore his ACL in October against and, the Broncos. And he, and he is he's reportedly available to play this year. But wasn't there a part of you? Before Dalvin Cook was signed, that was like, ooh, I don't know if the workload is going to be good for someone that young coming off an injury like that, coming back yeah. this fast. And I think there's an ancillary benefit to having Cook, to taking some of that workload off of Hall. Cook teaching Hall some of the tricks of the trade that's going to be great for him long term, great for the Jets. Yeah, well, you were there 100%. with me. You know, we were at the Jet Camp, and we were talking to Coach Sala about you know, the acquisition of, of, Dalv, of Dalvin Cook and talking about Brees Hall. And they're going to keep Reese Hall on a pitch count because only Adrian Peterson in the history of the NFL at running back came back from a torn ACL in under a year and was lights out amazing. It doesn't happen. So, Brees Hall is their future. Dalvin Cook's got a one-year deal. But you were there, like Coach Sal said, Dalvin Cook is as smart as Aaron Rodgers is. He understands defenses, and he's already paid dividends in helping the younger guys understand what they see when they break out of the huddle. Mm -hmm. It's a win, win, win across the board, and that's so new for us. Yes. I mean, you know, you played for the New York Jets, uh, where Rex Ryan, it's just different. You know, the expectation is just different. And the fact that Cook says that tells you it's different because there were guys in your position that would have been like, I ain't going to the Jets. 100%. Bingo. Love it. Like, get used to it. By the way, yeah. here's why I know the Jets are really, really good and the rest of the world is having a tough time dealing with our goodness. There's a random uh, bar in Milwaukee. Right, a Green Bay Packer bar. No joke. And they put out a special yesterday that if you're in their bar and you're drinking and watching NFL football on Sunday and Aaron Rodgers and the Jets lose, all drinks are free. I like it. Come on now. Wow. We're living rent free in your heads in Wisconsin. <laughs> and true. it's such a cheesy bar. They've got a couple little caveats oh, this so bad. to protect themselves. Can you put it up there real quick, guys? They're not going to pay for the food. <coughs> you have to get in there 15 minutes. Yeah. It's, it's a mess. Like, so they know we're going to win a lot of games, and that's going to bother them. <laughs> um, so they're kind of trying to cover themselves if the New York Jets win every game and they go out of business. But I love the fact that people are so concerned with the Jets being good uh, that they're on. panicking. Hold on. Time out. If the Jets are up by two scores in the fourth quarter, yeah, I'm ordering so heavy at that bar. Yeah, like there's no, this, they say nothing about that. Like, yeah, I'm going so hard at that yeah. bar. If they're up by two well, scores, well, this in the fourth rules quarter. like it, it's it's got to be when the when the Packers aren't playing. So yeah. how many games, games are there this yeah. year when the Jets and Packers are not playing at the same time? Money, money Maybe night. six or seven yeah, of them, money right? Night, yeah. uh, you have to start your tab. 15, 15 minutes, minutes before the game starts. He's got to play the whole game. They're trying their hardest to say, we're jealous of the Jets, and we want to make a name for ourselves, <laughs> but we're scared of the Jets, too. Aww. Love it. Love it. Oh, man. Moving on. Like, we, like, we might have, maybe not, but we might have one great year of football. I'm 54 years old. I've only had two. All right? 
This might be the first good year we've had in 13 years, and that bothers you, the rest of America. You know you're just fan when you years. might have one good year and you are over the moon about it. Yeah. We might have one good right. year. Like the over the moon. Like 13 we, we years, could be we good. Make the playoffs. Right. We have the longest drought of any North American professional sports team from the playoffs. We might, might make the playoffs this year, the playoffs. and America can't stand it. Ooh. I love it. We're going to be so obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the next headline. No, I can tell you something, and I'm telling Wardrobe right now. I just made a decision, a declarative decision, all right? After every Jet win, I'm doing the Monday show in full-on Jet pajamas. <laughs> After every jet win. Every jet win. I do right. the day after. All right. So, in other words, uh, so Jacoby. will have to get the other eight jet pajama yeah. outfits. Now, exactly. Eight? Yes, yes, yes. Eight. Wow. Fourteen different wow. sets of pajamas. Wow. I'm calling for right six now. Six we'll save for next year. <laughs> Moving on, finally, to the last headline, and that oh, news out of jets. Dallas. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. The, the no, jets. no. Turn his mic off. The Turn his mic off. Thursday night. Turn his mic off. Friday morning, I'm in pajamas. <laughs> Oh, the Jets play Monday night. Tuesday morning, I'm in pajamas. <laughs> well, seriously, if he turns the mic off. Mike McCarthy said this about the Trey Lance trade. A lot of discussion about what he knew and didn't know. And here's what he said. Quote, I was involved in the evaluation. But the actual business component of it, I am not involved in. It. Hmm, those decisions come down to Jerry and Stephen Jones. Crow, when he says he's involved in the evaluation process of Trey Lance, what exactly does Mike McCarthy mean? Free draft evaluation. That's only three years ago. Three, three years, years ago. Years ago. Yeah. During COVID, when he didn't play college that's football. That's the only evaluation I can think of. He played eight games. What evaluation can you really get <laughs> off eight games? Well, really when, anything off eight when games. they first acquired him, we didn't hear Mike directly, but the word was that he did think highly of him in the pre-draft. Pre yes. Like he had scattered him well and thought yes. the kid had town, and it was certainly an NFL quarterback. So that, that's what he's alluding to. But, I mean, to me, that's uh, it's like, you know, he's kind of been eunuched. Right, you know, the Jones oh, yes. have cut. Wow. Yeah. They've, they've, they've cut. <laughs> Unic. They cut his balls off. That's Delded. what they've done. Like, wow. I'm sorry to say that, but wow. listen. And I'm a Mike McCarthy guy. I've always said Mike McCarthy wow. doesn't get the credit he deserves. He's just as successful as Sean Payton, but we view the two men differently, and that's not right because Mike McCarthy has been a very successful that's coach cool, yeah. and coordinator. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that when you go out there and make a personnel decision, and you know it's a very big one because A, it's the Cowboys, B, he happens to play quarterback, and all the things that come along with Trey Lance, and at no point – do you have the courtesy of just saying to your head coach, who's essentially the CEO of football operations for your franchise, hey, what do you think? That's, that's embarrassing if I'm Mike McCarthy. And if you have any sense of self-respect at all, while you still have a job to do, that should irk you. If you're Mike McCarthy, and I'm sure it does. I uh, and I, I pray, it probably does. But you got to think about this. Jerry's been doing this. The whole entire agreed. time. Agreed. Agreed. So it's not, it's not, I don't think it's a, 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 a slap in the face for Mike McCarthy because at the end of the day, Jerry's been doing this. Since well, let me Jerry stop you there. I don't think he meant it as a slap in the no, face to McCarthy, no. but he did mean it as a challenge to Dak Prescott. Is it, but is There's it no truly, doubt in my mind about that. Listen, is it truly a challenge to Dak Prescott? I, that, that's, that's my thing because I, I'm like this. You have a guy that hasn't proven himself. Yes, he's yes, he was a first round draft pick, third pick overall. They gave up three first rounds and a third round pick yep. for him to get him. But realistically, what what threat does he have or challenge does he put toward Dak Prescott? Because Dak has proven himself in year in and year out. Yes, he had a terrible year last year, threw a lot of interceptions. <laughs> but has only won what one one playoff game? He's got two what, wins. Two, two his wins. first road game. First road game. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're saying, okay, what else? What else can this Trey Lance do? This is the development process for Trey Lance. Now, is he going to be set up for the future? Yes. Now, 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 next year you're not going to have Cooper Rush. You're probably going to have Trey Lance at number two. Now you put him at number two to try to develop him. The more the more you can develop him, the more that he can be the quarterback of the future. When that time comes. Look, if Trey Lance, and we don't know what the real knock in his game is because we just didn't see him enough. There's rumors out there, can't read a defense, uh, had a tough time with the playbook, all injury that kind problems. of stuff. Injury problems. And, uh, uh, yeah, and obviously more than anything, he's had injury problems. Um, but it's just, 
when you're the Dallas Cowboys and your starting quarterback has been maligned because of his performance, especially in the postseason, and you go out there really kind of in the cover of darkness without telling anybody, and you trade for a guy that was so well thought of by a competitor that they gave up three first-rounders yes. and a third-rounder. Part of the reason you do that is to make your starting quarterback a little uncomfortable. So, hey, we're not going to tolerate another year in which you lead the league in picks. So who's going to be the quarterback? Coach Ray Lance? Dak Prescott. But I'm just saying, it, don't, it doesn't matter. You can say it's a challenge. It's, you can say, it's hey, I need you to pick your up and go from there. But it's just like, what does Trey Lance really do to that Prescott? So, Crow, Nothing. you always talk about how Jerry Jones sort of operates uni- unilaterally. Yes. Right? He, he does kind of whatever he wants. Could you see a world in which there's a Trey Lance package? You know, Ooh. Dak doesn't run as much Ooh. as he used to since the ankle injury. Could you see a world in which sort of a Taysom Hill-style Trey Lance package could be integrated into the offense? I don't. I, I don't. I, I, and the reason I said that, I don't think Mike McCarthy, he was calling the plays, mm. will do that. I think he, he wants to have his quarterback and not have him get off rhythm at any point in time in the game. You don't want your quarterback to get off rhythm. Plus, the minute you, you do that, the clock starts ticking. There you go. Right? You don't the end do of that. Dak, that clock is live and well because if you brought Trey Lance in, like you're saying, and he was successful, the first bad game Dak Prescott has, you know exactly what's going to happen. But no, More Trey oh, Lance. But it's no, going to happen on this show. It's going to happen on the show, the first bad game that Dak has. We're going to celebrate it so hard. Well, it depends what the Jets do. That's a good point. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine it's gonna be fun no matter what. Because we're going to be here whether they win or lose. That's the beauty of being on TV. <laughs> Jets win, we celebrate. Jets we've never we celebrate. lost the game <laughs> on this show. I can tell you that. Coming up, we've got five of the most burning questions as we get ready for the 2023 NFL. NFL season, including which division is going to lay claim to being the best division of football, plus a lot more right after this. That's David Jacoby. We got Antonio Crow Marty. And now Jacoby's got a list he put together this morning. Uh, some of the top five burning questions that he's got for this upcoming NFL season. Uh, we've all experienced the burn before in our lives. Normally, it's just a little lotion and some antibiotics that we go. This is a different type of burn. At the oven. At the oven. At the oven. There are no stories in sports, so we make them up with segments like this. It's time for the top five burning questions heading into the NFL season. We start with this. It is my belief. Go. The top to bottom. The AFC North is the best division in football. Is the AFC North the best division in football top to bottom? Yeah, I was no. going to say yes until Ron Rivera said that Sam Howell's really good. <laughs> <I didn't laughs> until he discovered Sam Howell. <laughs> now, now that I know we discovered this a great what? player, this the NFC East might be the best. Throw a football this guy. Look, I, I, you, it's a, obviously it's a silly question because there's no way to quantify it today. But the reality is that you've got a stocked and loaded offense in Baltimore. You've got the return of Deshaun Watson. I think they're going to be a very good football team. We all know what the Bengals are. Yes. And, oh, by the way, I know it's a limited amount of time. It's preseason. Kenny Pickett looked like the bee's knees yeah. uh, this preseason for Pittsburgh. I, I don't know who you'd pick other than the AFC North when you're going to include all four teams. I could, I'm going to pick the AFC East. <laughs> so okay. I'm pick the AFC East from top to bottom. You look at New England's from, not as good. You got New, New England. That's the problem. New yeah. England drags you really, down. Really, we always say that, but New England always finds a way to win games. Do they? And can they pick? They're going to win eight or nine games. That's what they do. I'm not going to screw that. But. We, we cannot. We, we can never not add New England as being a top team still in the AFC East. Just, just of because of Just because of Belichick and okay. what he can do design wise and everything else. To me. Top to bottom, when you look at it from the on the AFC East, you go from you go Buffalo, you go to Miami, you go to the Jets, you go to New England. From top to bottom, what they have and what they can do and what they're capable of, that's to me is the best division in football right now. I, I, there's only two AFC East teams that can legitimately win a Super Bowl this year, uh, and that's Jets? the Bills and the Jets. Yes. All right, in the AFC North, the division you asked about, Jacoby, and I'm going to say this, and you think I'm being crazy? I'm not. There's three teams that can win the Super Bowl this wow. year. And that's the Ravens, and that's the Cleveland Browns, and that's the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay? Mm. I'm telling you, you're sleeping on the Cleveland Browns. I would give the Browns the the same thing. Why you you, you got to put them in the same Browns and the Jets? I mean, say the Dolphins in the same. Because I'd rather have Deshaun Watson as my quarterback than two of them. Okay, Jonathan Taylor signs with the Dolphins, gets traded to the Dolphins later today. 
Yeah, I, listen, they're good, very good offense. You know, their defense is taking some hits, obviously. I, their their mm-hmm. secondary is not what they thought it was going to be when they got Jalen Ramsey. I think their defense is a weak part of that team. Sure. I'm not going to argue their offense. Their offense is legit, So you know, the next but burning, I don't like their quarterback. Next burning question. This one I'm fascinated by because I truly don't know the answer. I look forward to watching these three young men play. Which that sounds so weird. Rookie quarterback, stop it! <laughs> Didn't it? I'm trying to be serious, Craig. I'm just saying. It's We're sad starting rookie quarterback. We'll have the best season. Of course, I'm talking about Young, Stroud, and yeah. Richardson. We're gonna forget Tune in Arizona. Uh, you want to go first on this one? I got Bryce Young. I got really? CJ Stroud. Bryce Young. I got Bryce Young. It's not gonna be a good quarterback in this league. You know that. I believe 100% he will be. He knows how to throw the ball inside the pocket. He knows how to throw the ball outside the pocket. Precise passing. You saw the you saw the over route that he threw, the two over routes that he threw uh, to Thielen, Adam Thielen. Yeah. And those things was a thing of beauty. And where was he? Inside the pocket. Mm-hmm. You give him the window, he can make every single throw. I watched this kid play when I was coach at Texas A&M. Yeah. When we played Alabama. This kid can make every single throw in the touch and the velocity that he can put on the ball. Everything that he does. Understanding the game, he can read defenses, understands where they are. He knows where his offensive players are. His football IQ is very high. Yeah. And I love the way this kid plays. He's but gonna, he's, he's gonna be still the best five one. foot six. We can call it what I mean, wrong. that's a problem. It's in one the NFL. Six, okay. Five and foot six, here's one why. six. But, but here's why, if I may. I was going to use this as a prop, right? Mm-hmm. In college, the window is about here. Got to see through that window or over, right? In the NFL, it's up here. Wow. He's not going to see anybody. You tell me how when Moses offense line was 6'5". It's different it's in the NFL. Different. It's it not is. different. The size of the guys are not different. And yes, I'm a Bryce speed. Young guy. I like Bryce Young. He's, he's gonna be. He's gonna be the best. He's player. gonna be a slot receiver by 2025. <laughs> you, keep saying, you keep saying how much you like yeah. Bryce Young, but you never say yeah. anything positive about him. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. You know what? That's when I figure out that he really does like the kid. Yes, I do exactly. like Bryce Young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll be honest. If I'm Craig is me, you, that means you I like think you. he's gonna yeah, be great. Yeah, yeah. Look, I got a five for nine inch football player in my house. I root for guys that are. <laughs> but, and, and I want him to do well, I really do. But he's just not going to because no one his size has ever had success. Let's explain in to the me NFL. why you have Stroud instead of Richardson. I thought Stroud's game was more Stroud's advanced more. and mature yeah. than Richardson's and Bryce Young's, and he played he played more as well. Uh, I think five years from now, there's a good chance Anthony Richardson's the I best of the bunch. I would say you have the best today. Season. As far as rookie seasons, which I think was your question, I would still go C.J. Stroud. That's fine. Yeah. I'd say career, I'd probably go Richardson just because of the ceiling. But I would say season, I would probably go Stroud as well. I probably would. Oh, two yeah. against one. That's what we're doing today, huh? That's what we do. So let's <laughs> move it on. <laughs> I like this question a lot. All uh-huh. right. Sometimes you pause. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk. <laughs> You're not. I'm surprised you've been listening. To be yeah, I'm like, do I go? <laughs> no, you don't. Building tension. Yeah, Building ahead. tension. I never seen anybody do that before. I like this next question a lot. Go ahead. Yeah. What is it by watching young men run around fields? <laughs> no, I'm trying to build tension with the with the pregnant pause. Go ahead. Is Brock Purdy enough to lead the 49ers to the Super Bowl? Go ahead. Yes, I believe he is. I, I like that you raised uh, your hand. You know, I got to <laughs> slap my hand down. But, yes, I think he is. I think uh, he's proven himself. Um, he no- understands the offense. He can- he's not a guy that's one to throw interceptions. He's a guy that wants to sit back and control the game. It's all about game management. I'm going to take my chances when I can, but I'm going to let my playmakers be the playmakers. I can get the ball to Debo. I can get the ball to uh, Christian McCaffrey. So I can get the ball to my big-time playmaker, Greg Kittles, and all those guys. I get my ball to the playmaker. Let those guys make the, make the, make the splash plays. I'm a George Kittle. I'm sorry, I said Greg Kittle. Okay. George Kittle. Uh, but it's just like when you're when you're doing that, it's all about management, not turning the ball over. Defense is going to do their job, get me the ball back on the short side of the field, and I can go out and go play football and manage the game the way Cal Shanahan needs me to be. I mean, I, I think Joe Montana and a pair of Skechers could quarterback the Niners to a Super Bowl <laughs> this year. He's like 65 years old. Uh, yeah, I mean, ain't that hard. Right, you've got oh, man. You, a great defense, not a good defense, oh, a yeah. great defense, right? And I keep talking about the weapons, which is why, you know, the nonsense of we didn't build a team around Trey the right way on, was such garbage. You've got an all-world running back in McCaffrey. You've got Debo Samuel. You've got Brandon Ayuk, who's the most underappreciated wide receiver in all football. I love that guy. And as a Crow City, you got Kittle. 
So you've got all the weapons. You've got the best left tackle maybe the league has seen since Anthony Munoz uh, in Williams. They've got everything. Yeah. And while, yes, we've only seen, what was it, eight total games yeah. out of a Brock Purdy, and the last one doesn't count because he got hurt in the first yeah. possession. All he has to do is not be the reason they lose. He doesn't have to be the reason they win, and they're going to win a lot of games. Yep. If there's, I don't know what the over-under is on them. Troy, can you check that for me? I'm assuming it's 12 and a half. Yeah, that's just top of my head I guess. 11 and a half, 12 and a half. Yeah, like that, yeah. That, that's the only team right now that is a lock to win more games than whatever Vegas has or FanDuel has the over-under at because they're that good. Yeah. And I respect the fact that... So, I'm being told that the over-under for San Francisco is 10 and a half. Whoa. Ooh. Craig won't that, say it, but I will say it. I like the over. Yeah, now, now I worry about it, though. Now I have to. Now I got it. <laughs> now I don't like it. Too easy. Now I'm not. Too, too, too easy. Now, no, 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 no. <laughs> you want me to do the question? Do the you question you again. <laughs> Is Brock Kerr Purdy good enough to lead the 49ers to the Super Bowl? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the question. I understand. Uh, I understand. I understand. Uh, that sounds like a sucker We'll do bet. some research. Yeah. We'll revisit yeah. this later. I look, he's going to lose a game this year. And I guess the question is, you know, when he has a bad game himself, when he's the reason they lose a the game, you know, three picks, a fumble, misreads yeah, a play, whatever it is, it's going to happen at some it's point because it does in everyone's career in the NFL. 100%. How does he react to it? Um, but that I'm shocked by that. That's crazy. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> what team has the highest total for wins this year as of right now? Troy, do you have that? Oh, Chiefs, 13? Yeah, it's got to be the Chiefs. Yep. Yeah, that's – wow. The San Francisco 49ers – so the Chiefs are 11 and a half, I'm being told. Moving on to our fourth – Tell you what, next week – here's what we'll do, I promise. Oh. Next week, leading into the Thursday night game, for those of you that are going to wager a shekel or two, we will walk you through the most responsible – and best way to handle your money preseason uh, for futures and all the over-unders. We'll do that next week. Okay. Great. Tune in next week. 7 a.m. every just, day. Just F-S1. another reason to tune in next week. Yes, of course. Yes. There you We're go. also going to have another former NFL player in his PJs here. <laughs> every day. Every day. <laughs> so I'm excited for that. Fourth burning question. We have no idea who it'll be, but it'll be somebody. Will play. all of the new Ravens weapons around Lamar Jackson Return him to MVP form, Craig. 100% yes. 100% uh, I, yes. I think the Baltimore Ravens are going to have the best offense production-wise in the NFL. Ooh. I think they oh, are. to me, Craig. They are going Ooh. to be an absolute juggernaut. I think you're looking at a 5,000-yard season from Lamar Jackson. Combined. I hate having to say, obviously, the caveat's injuries, as it always is, right? Yeah. yeah. But between, I mean, they got everything. They got everything you could want to have a prolific offense, and I think the Baltimore Ravens will have the best offense in all of football this year. So to answer your question, yes. And with that comes MVP votes for Lamar Jackson. Ooh, see, I... Yeah. It's okay, buddy. I, I said, I said no. The only reason I said I, I think Lamar is going to turn the form no matter what. I, okay. I don't think it's the weapons that's going to be around him. Uh, yes, they add value to it, but I, I think from a... MVP standpoint, Lamar, is, you, like you said, he's going to be back throwing the ball. He has Andrews. He has Odell Beckham. He has uh, Flowers yep. that you the just had, yep. uh, electrifying receiver uh, who's going to who plays in the slot. So, yes, I, I think from a, from a personal standpoint, he returns back. I don't think it's just necessarily the weapons that's going to be around him. I think Lamar is going to be do Lamar and do what he does. OBJ is added, and then you yes. have Flowers added. You get Bateman back, who I love oh, I from injury. About Bateman. Yeah, I love Bateman. I you get him Bateman. back. Everyone forgot about Bateman. I forgot about Bateman. Okay. You got okay. Aguilar. All right, you, you know what? I'll change like, you, you change it? You change it? Yes. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. 100%. Good. So that's yes. two times well, in like one cha- second. You completely changed their answer. You changed it because of Bateman? No, not just because of Bateman. Listen, I'm thinking just from – I'm thinking about all the way around now. Yeah. From and Andrews, Andrews. They got yeah. it all. They've yeah, got it They have all. everything. They've got, got it. Yeah. And they have a, a good defense, if not a very good defense, which had some fourth quarter problems last year. They blew double digit leads in the fourth quarter, I think three out of the first seven weeks last yes. year. So that, that was an issue for them. But yeah, I think the Ravens are going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. Todd Monkey comes over, obviously, new offensive coordinator, oh. loves to throw the ball. And you got a guy who can sling it. So I think Baltimore is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And uh, for me, it, which we'll do, I know, at some point before the season starts, a Super Bowl contender for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Last question is for you, Crow. Yes. When you take a look at the Jets' schedule. Here we go. The final burning question is, 
what week does Craig completely give up on the Jets? Because I'm looking at a loss in week five to the Broncos. And I think that's when Craig abandons the Jets as a Super Bowl contender. You said a week five. Yes. Yeah, they're not yeah. losing yeah, to yeah, the Broncos. Yeah, yeah. They're not losing to the Broncos. Thank you, Craig. Okay. Well, we'll Thank see. you. Thank you. Remember you said that. Remember you said that. Thank you. See, I, I said week 10. Oh, well, oh. Okay. They're, they're not losing to the Raiders. Losing the Raiders? <laughs> Man, no. give, give them a loss no. to the Bengals and we can No, lose. but only just saying, you, 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 when you're looking at the schedule, and I get it, we, we, we're all making fun. But at the end of the day, it's just like, you got to look at the schedule. We got, we got Buffalo week one, Loss. Dallas. Loss. You got New England. Hello. We're not losing against Buffalo week one. Yes, you are. Nah, that's Don't Yes, you are. Okay, we're going to discuss that. We're going to discuss that on done. Monday. We I, I, we're Monday. not losing. I'm done. Yeah, yes, you are. You know what, Craig? We're, we're, we're going to go to week 18. That's what we're going to go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I tell you, I, week 18. That's what, that's what Craig. That's what I'll Craig tell you gonna the game up. that's going to change the fortunes of two franchises and make people start jumping off bridges, no doubt. And that's week eight. Giants-Jets. Oh. Because the Giants think of themselves as a return uh, playoff team from last year, right? And they've got more offensive talent now. The New York Jets at that point will have gone through the toughest part of their schedule, which is obviously the first six games you saw it up there. That is going to be a significant game towards which one of those teams makes the playoffs and possibly which team doesn't. And I cannot live in a world where I lose a football game to my crosstown rivals. We don't play each other a lot in the regular season, and this has got to be the year where we're fortunate enough to play the Giants and we beat them by 30. If the Giants beat the Jets, and I don't get to wear pajamas in here the next day, I'm not going to be happy. I'm trying to figure out, has since 2010 or whatever I came over, have the, have the Jets ever lost to the Cowboys? Have the Jets lost since to the Cowboys? Cowboys? Since, since 2011. Well, our, our researcher will check on that. I know the one yeah. team, the New York Jets, have never beaten. We have played them 12 times, and we're 0-12. The New York Jets as a franchise have never beaten the Philadelphia Eagles. And we play yep, them this yep, year. Uh, yeah, we oh, damn sure have. Yeah. That'll be another loss. <laughs> Make that 13 right now. Yeah. Um, I'm being told we did beat the Dallas Cowboys how many times? Three in a row. There you go. That's oh, right. There you go. That's right, Jerry. That's ownership. Yeah, keep signing guys like Trey Lance. Maybe you'll have a shot one day to beat us. Craig, Meanwhile, we got plenty more football coming your way, including first in football. And will that be it? See, sometimes we put dumb questions on the screen. That's not a dumb we don't question. know the answer is no. The Eagles best wide receiver tandem. Dumb. What are we doing? Current favorite of Philadelphia. <laughs> Next. Time now for first in football. We start off here in New York with Garrett Wilson, uh, best second-year wide receiver in all football, was talking about how special Aaron Rodgers is. Let me hear what G-Dub had to say. Go ahead. He sees the game, you know, through a whole different lens, and, and that comes with the experience and, and just how smart he is. As far as out on the field, it's it's um, just precision when he's throwing the ball. It, it's um, When it's in the meeting room, it's super detailed, which helps me be able to put it from the – meeting room and take it out to the field and execute. You know, it's funny. None of that stuff should be special, but obviously it is because there's not a lot of guys as good as Aaron Rodgers, but there's no doubting the fact that the Rodgers to Wilson combination uh, expectation-wise yes. should be as big as, you know, Cousins to Jefferson, you know, Burrow to Jamar or T. Uh, it should be a, a top three or four uh, combination this year. Oh, yeah, 100%. I, and I think what Aaron Rodgers brings to the game is, like you say, he sees it through a different lens. He has seen everything uh, through the kitchen sink that a defense has thrown at him. Yeah. So he understands it. But also at that, like you said, precise pass. He knows where to put the ball, how to put the ball, and that helps the receiver out too. And understands that when you're in the meeting room with a guy like Aaron Rodgers, he tells you where he where you need to be, what this defense is going to do, how we can get open, find the green area in the zones. Oh, first man, he, this person likes to do this. He knows what he's looking for. So when the receivers can, young guys like Garrett Wilson understands that you build a, a, a repertoire with your with your with your. Uh, which are which are quarterback? It makes it a lot easier for the quarterback to get the ball where you need it to be. And I mean, you playing against you playing with one of the most talented guys at the quarterback position. Do you ever think it's life. weird if the quarterback knows more than the coach? No, because the coach. Because, and the reason I said this is because there's in-game situations that a coach can't see 
that a quarterback or a player see yeah. that he can express to his teammates and say, hey, I saw this, he does this. Hey, I know he's going to do this because he's, he's done this in the past. So it's like the in-game experience. Coaches can't tell you in-game experience. They only can tell you what they see on film. So players can give you more of a get breakdown in film study of what we see uh, on the football field because of the experience that we've had over the years. Yeah, there's a lot of people uh, right now who think, uh, correctly so, that Gary Wilson's probably going to be a 2,000-yard receiver this year and that Aaron Rodgers will probably be, be the first-gen quarterback to throw for over 7,000 yards <laughs> in, yes. in, a, in a, not a game, of course, because that'd be a lot, but in a season. Yeah. Jokes, oh. jokes aside, yeah. when you watch that first oh, preseason that, that, that Rodgers played, oh, played in, the first pass, scripted, the very first pass, left side yeah. to Wilson, runs down the sideline. They got a defensive pass interference going to Wilson. He was targeting Wilson. We all talk about the touchdown, but he was only in for, like, I don't know, 10 plays, and three or four of them went to Wilson. I think they're really fostering that relationship. And when you watch Hard Knocks, you hear Randall Cobb talk about how yes. Aaron doesn't trust you. He's not going to throw it to you. Yeah. And you hear sort of Lazard and Cobb talk about how it's all fun now in training camp. We're going to lunch and having a good time. But you really need to be on your P's and Q's. And that attention to detail that Wilson is talking about is going to be prevalent in those first few weeks when they really realize who Aaron Rodgers is. It also shows you why they're going to be so good together because everybody knew Garrett was going to get the ball in that last preseason game because they hadn't played together against anybody. So the obvious idea, Lazard was out. You know what Randall Cobb is. He doesn't have to practice with him anymore. They spent 10 years together. Is I'm going to throw the ball to you. And you knew that and couldn't yep. stop it. That's why, again, 7,000 might be, well, <laughs> I mean, around 7,000. Like, yeah. 8,000? Oh, Has 8,000 ever been done, Troy? Never been done. Never I don't been think done. so. Never been done. All right, second of football, talking about wide receivers, uh, A.J. Brown. Uh, I was talking about uh, Devontae Smith, and obviously it's all platitudes. Listen to what he had to say. Sometimes you see it, and, and I and I have seen uh, reporters just asking asking each of us questions, and I, I don't think you should do that. I think you should just enjoy both of us. You know, it's not okay. about me and Devontae. We're we're great together. We complement off each other really well. And like I said, that's that's another wide receiver one on the side of me, man. So I think everybody, the city of Philly or whoever, I think you should just appreciate both of us while you have us. I love uh, it. I love that it. makes me want to vomit I my know. mouth. Why? I First love off, it. I like the fact that he's he's pumping his guy up. I totally respect as a teammate. Neither one of us are the one. We're both ones. I, I'm good with that. But we should all just basically shut up and, and enjoy watching you guys do your thing. Ugh. He's telling the truth. Ugh. Don't try to. How about, how about you stop talking and asking questions oh and just sit back and enjoy what I do? Ugh. I mean, look, look at the targets. I mean, you have 145, 136. 88 receptions, 95 receptions, both over 1,000 yards. Great seasons. Great seasons. Uh, by the way, yeah. I'm not knocking the play. It's great. No, no, no. no I no. just wish you'd stop talking. Why? Because enjoy I think he's responding to the questions that were asked of him. He's responding to the two number uh, ones that you on. have. You have a 1A, 1B. I don't think anybody should ask which one of us is number one. You should all just shut up and watch the, watch the stars perform. Okay, Shania. No, no. <laughs> he did not mean it like that. That's exactly what he no, meant. He goes, how about you guys stop what you're doing yeah. and sit down and buy a ticket and watch the show? Enjoy. Because we don't yeah. know how long that's going to last. Okay, Taylor Let's Swift, enjoy. whatever you say. Oh, my God. I actually Taylor agree, I agree with him that they do complement each other very well. Very well. I think that they, 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 are, they are 1A and 1B, and they bring different things to the table. I think that's fair to say. That's They're both say. good wide receivers. I mean, they complement each other. They What's does. that even mean? They have different skill sets. Really? One, one guy weighs 170 pounds. One guy weighs 270 pounds. What are the different yeah. skill sets? Yeah. They both yeah. go deep and they get open. <laughs> no. no. So, listen. They, listen. AJ can take a slant. Bounce off blocks. All mm-hmm. crossing routes. I have a guy that, that runs precise routes. I yeah. Can, I can get open. He's a better route runner than AJ. That's just what it is. Like, I'm going to have a guy that I can run routes, and I have another big guy that can run routes, but also can break every single arm tackle yeah. to get to the end zone. As a DB, you know you're going against A.J. Brown. How do you oh, approach it differently? Man, you better get ready mentally and physically. He's going to talk. He's a big talker. He, can he be chirps. Like, I'm, not yeah. worried. I'm not worried about the talking part. It's just the physical The tackling part? In the, 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 the mental <laughs> yeah. part of the game. Yeah. You got to think, like, I mean, for me, like, going into going against, playing against Brandon Marshall, another big receiver, 6'5", yep. 235. I was more mentally drained than I was physically drained. Why? Because it's a chess match. I gotta, I gotta change up certain things. We played against, played against each other so many times. I have to figure out a way to win because he knows me just as much as I know him. So it's like it becomes a physical, I mean, a mental part of the game where you have to figure out how can I 
get into this guy's head, or how can I try to beat him yeah. in ways that he, yeah, he hasn't seen? Well, that, what's, that's also what makes the great players great. Yeah, you guys right. are all physical specimens and are great athletes. Yes. Now, the difference is between the years between the and years. understanding the tendencies a guy might have and that kind of stuff. All right, third in football. Again, speaking of wide receivers, it seems like the Minnesota Vikings and Justin Jefferson are uh, closing in on an extension before week one starts. Peyton Man. Yeah, look, I give J.J. credit. He came out last week and said, I know I'm going to get paid. My job is to perform, and as long as I keep performing, the money's going to be there. That is so refreshing for an athlete to say. <laughs> you know who wouldn't say that? A.J. Brown. <laughs> oh, yeah. My that's Why my we got to go Justin back to Jefferson. A.J.? I AJ love has that. nothing to do with this one. Well, they're going to try to get a deal done. Tyree Kill makes more than anybody. Is there anyone on that list you would rather have than Justin Jefferson? Uh, no. no, 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 no. So he needs, he deserves to be on that list. But I do like, I do like the approach. I mean, first of all, it seems a little late for them to be trying to get a deal done before the season. Yeah, where what happened the last couple of months? It, it, but he's not, he's not. He, he didn't hold out. He no. wasn't threatening. No, he seems like he's a pretty happy guy in Minnesota. You're the best receiver in the league. Yeah. You have the confidence that you're stay. You're going to continue to be the best receiver. In the I mean, league. think about what Justin. That's because his resume speaks for itself. Yes, yes. and there think about what Justin Jefferson did. No joke, and he didn't do it on purpose. His brilliance as a wide receiver made Minnesota feel that Adam Thielen was expendable. Mm -hmm. He was their best receiver before J.J. got there. And we could get rid of Dalvin Cook also. And Stephon Diggs. Because that's how good Justin Jefferson is. Stephon right. Diggs. Yeah, that guy's money, and he's about to make a lot, a lot of, of it. money. All right, yeah. fourth in football, Ron Rivera. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to handle this one, folks. But Ron Rivera said uh, F. And I can just leave it at that. Uh, in, in talking about Sam Howell, his now starting quarterback, uh, he played last year week 18. And I guess he played okay, had like 11 completions, whatever it was. And Ron Rivera said yesterday, if I would have known that he was any good, I might have played him a lot sooner. Um, well, one might ask the question, how didn't you know since you were the coach when they when they got Sam Howell? <laughs> and I'm telling you the answer, because Ron Rivera's given up. <laughs> he doesn't it's like, care. It's like a 30-year-old having ice cream for the first time. You're like, this stuff is great. If I only guess if I had known the ice cream was this delicious, I would have been eating it for the last 25 years. Yeah, look, everybody loves Ron Rivera. He was the first guest we ever had on this show. And I like him a lot and respect him a great deal. 100%. On and off the field, he's a good man and has been a very good coach in the NFL. But that's the kind of thing <laughs> dudes who get fired in week five say. You know what I'm saying? If, was, you know, I, I would have played him. Um, I didn't know he would play. <laughs> Who's the Sam guy? Who is the Sam guy? Yeah, yeah. number 14. Wow. What, what, that is what, a DB. what was he showing that up? That is the kicker. You didn't know that he was And again, kicker. it's not like Sam Howell was an intern in the training department <laughs> yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden just started, you know, throwing <laughs> dimes everywhere, right? The dude was a drafted quarterback <laughs> in the NFL. Oh, so man. that's I, Ron Rivera. I love you, and that's Ron. a guy who's probably so going to be sitting here next year <laughs> talking NFL on Fox. <laughs> now, I didn't know this job was so great. I would have never coached. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up, we oh, got my God. your late show headlines including the clock is ticking, less than seven hours to go. What are the Colts going to do with Jonathan Taylor? And what are the Dallas Cowboys going to do now that they brought in Trey Lance and Mike McCarthy wasn't in the room? Headlines! It's time for the two biggest things happening in sports. We start with Don't mess up. Jonathan Taylor. Here's the thing. The deadline was set for today for him to find a trade for himself for them to trade him. However, it was a self-imposed deadline, and my esteemed colleagues, Antonio Cromarty and Craig Carton, are thinking that maybe they might just blow right through that red light. Well, they can. And head right into week one, take them off right? the bump list. Uh, look, the first thing they have to do unless they're totally just going to screw this kid, is take him off the pup list because at 4 o'clock today, if you're on the pup list, you are ineligible yep. for the first four weeks of the season, a.k.a. Kyler Murray in Arizona, just as an yep. example, right? So the first thing you got to do, because he's telling everybody he's healthy and good to go, <laughs> he don't have a back injury, they made it up. The second part of that is, are you going to accept less than what you want for him? 
You know, and that's up to one guy. And that guy, at times, behaves like a bit of a lunatic. And that's Jim Irsay. Right. And nobody knows when he wakes up in the morning what mood he's going to be in or what he's going to try to do to screw his own franchise. The mere fact that Jonathan Taylor, right now, that it's on the table, that he might not be playing football week one in the NFL is a crime and not fair to Jonathan Taylor. 100%. I, I, I think when you have a guy that says he's fine, he can go out and go mm -hmm. practice, he can do certain things, but you still put him on the PUP list, something is wrong. Yeah. All, over, all over a contract dispute. That's what it's basically over. Yeah. It's all over a contract He's dispute. in the last year like, of his rookie deal. He wants last, to get paid. He wants to get paid. What running back doesn't want to get paid? Like, great. You, you don't want to pay him. Fine. Why would you put him on a PUP list? If you don't want him, if you don't want to pay him, let him walk. Let so, him go. When you look at the Saquon Barkley situation and how that played out, you look yes. at Chris Jones and how we assume that's going to play out, this one just feels different. It's way like different. Like the whole, like, oh, you got a non-contact, non-football injury, so we don't have to pay you. Now you're on the pup list. Oh, if we both die, no one's going to care about us, and the NFL is going to move on. And then there's this, oh, you can go find your own trade. It just feels like this one is just messier than normal, and yeah. that makes me feel like he is no longer going to be in the cold. It's also strange when the guy that inherited his wealth is trying to keep money out of the pocket of a guy who's trying to earn his wealth. Uh, and that's a real problem for me as well. Uh, Jonathan Taylor's done nothing wrong. He's a great football player by all accounts. He's also a good guy. Uh, and he's sitting out there twisting in the wind uh, at the whim of a lunatic owner. And I don't know why the Players Association allows that. They should be fighting for Jonathan Taylor. And ultimately, I can't see him playing for Indianapolis based on what they've represented. 100%. I, I, don't, I don't see him playing for him. But you're going to give me a self-imposed, you're going to give yourself a self-imposed trade day line by 4 o'clock. Right. Why? And they say, you, you, you go find a trade. You can go find a trade. Now, but then, and but he found then, a trade. But he can find a trade, but they have to agree to it. Mm -hmm. And what they're looking for is a, a, a first-round draft pick. You're not going to get a first-round draft pick or points that add up to a first-round draft pick. Right. I was not giving up a two and a three for Jonathan Taylor. I'm sorry. It's the, it's the running back. That's what – this is what affects the running backs now. You have – Possibly what we're hearing was is, is a two and a five. Right. That might be the best that you can get. Well, we will see. Next headline involves a running back. This one has signed with the New York Jets. Yes. Dalvin Cook. He explained why he signed he with the Jets. Because he wants to win, Jacoby. Quote, my talent was oh. going to pay for itself, and I know the worth of Dalvin Cook. That's right. In third person. Yeah, Craig Carter. wanted to go to a team that was suited to win right now. What? And I'm trying to go get a ring. Florida boy. Craig, <laughs> this must feel so strange to you as a lifelong Jet fan to see free agents come to New York, New Jersey, because they have an opportunity to win. Yeah, he's right. I mean, that's the smartest thing any NFL player said this entire season. I want to win. What team gives me the best chance to win? The Jets. Chiefs. The Jets. The Jets. The Jets. The Jets. I, Jets. I can't believe Kansas City didn't want them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't get that at all. Like my head explodes. That Kansas City has no interest in getting talent. But listen, I have this one small little window as a fan to enjoy the possibility of making a run into the playoffs and then deep in the playoffs, maybe to Las Vegas the second Sunday in February. And I I'm either. not going to allow you boo birds to ruin that for me boo before birds. the boo season birds. starts. Who's who? Boo birds. I mean, yeah. Boo, boo, boo birds. Let's get this boo straight. Birds. Boo birds. I'm against the Jets. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe in the Jets. You know, I figured Bro out who does. you are. I figured out who you are. It took you me two days. You David I Jacoby. I figured out who you are. <laughs> you go by the name David Jacoby. But? But remember in the very first Hard Knocks, when Robert Saul told the story of the eagle soaring high and the black crow his sitting on his wings. His name is Crow. You're the black crow. That's what you are. You're the guy trying to knock the eagle down from the highest of heights. And me and Antonio are not going to tolerate it We're from you. We're higher. You know what? Yes. Higher. You're absolutely You're right. You are absolutely You're right. You're going to suffocate. Here's the thing is, <laughs> suffocate. You talk about the Jets so much on this show. And you're it's always a, a celebrating the Jets. Show. You've basically already put them in Las Vegas at the Super Bowl 30 seconds ago. Someone has to be not the crow on the back of the eagle. It's called the voice of reason. That's the right. The voice of me. reason. Yeah. The sane human being that understands the Jets maybe had the sixth best chance of winning the Super oh, Bowl. Oh, stop with Seventh, that. Seventh, maybe. Stop. That's crazy maybe. talk. 
Right now, I'll just give it to you straight, all right? All right. The two teams with the best chance in the NFC are the San Francisco 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. The two teams in the AFC are the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Jets. And the Chiefs. that's not up for debate. The Chiefs. Sorry. You forgot about the Chiefs? The Chiefs. The, what happened to the Chiefs? The Chiefs. The, the Kansas the Chiefs. City Chiefs. <laughs> Who won the Super Bowl? Yeah. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, tell me the last time somebody repeated a Super Bowl champion. I'll wait. Tell me the last time the Jets won a Super Bowl. Mm. Hey, hey. It's a longer wait. <laughs> Wait. Calm down. What else you got there, Jacoby? It's your turn to do the headlines. What? I'm going. Yep. I had no idea that's how this was going. Did we just start the headlines already? <laughs> were, were you doing them? No. A minute ago? Oh, Mike McCarthy's going to get fired in Dallas. He was not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, come on. He said that when uh, Trey Lance was, you know, being drafted, I was he, gave him, he gave him. I thought you were. <laughs> he gave him high grades. Uh, but he was not in the conversation to acquire him <laughs> oh for the Dallas God. Cowboys. Yeah, you know oh, why? Man. Because Jerry Jones doesn't respect him, that's why. And it's offensive because Mike McCarthy is a good man and a very good head coach. So, I understand why this played out the way it did. Because I think Jerry Jones had an opportunity to acquire Trey Lance at what I would think would be a, a, a very good value proposition. I agree with that. And the idea that round. he didn't say, hold on a second, Mr. Lynch, I have to run this by Mike McCarthy and hung up the phone, <laughs> that makes total sense to me. However, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. What you could have done is put Mike McCarthy in a position where when he's asked the question, he says, I was aware, I was made aware that we acquired Trey Lance. Maybe he doesn't say when exactly he was made aware, but there's a way to make this seem like he's not completely in the dark when it comes to personnel decisions except, for the team in which he's the head coach. Except player. that Jerry Jones said, I didn't consult with them. <laughs> I know. Like, he didn't need to. All to Jerry had to say was, we're all on the same page. Trey's not our starting quarterback. We think he's going to pay dividends at some point in the future. But every chance I get to bring more talent here, I'm going to do it, period, stop. But the thing about it is, like you said, he said, you, you said future dividends. Yeah. This man says, Jerry said, he gonna pay, could pay dividends for this year. Yes, he did. How? <laughs> How? Well, like. You're going to see Trey Lance on the field for the Cowboys this year. Crow, do you think you'll see Trey Lance on the field for the Cowboys? Maybe not as quarterback. He's uh, going to hey, be on the you field. You know what? I, I'm not going to put it past Jerry because Jerry, well, I've heard some stories, Jerry running the whole entire practice where he can walk up to a practice, have his buddies around and say, hey, Run this play, throw the ball to this person. <laughs> hey, Let me tell you something. You, never, you know, hey, you know you why just I love never that? Know. Let me tell you why I love that. I know that goes against the old guard of how an NFL owner should act, but let's be honest. If any one of us or you watching right now won the lottery and we were able to buy an NFL franchise, we would do the same damn oh, thing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'd, be at, I'd, be, I'd be in a golf cart. Like, Throw hey. the ball to Wilson. How can we never try the hook and ladder? How can we never try a hook and ladder? Oh, yeah. Why not just once? Hey, guys, does the Statue of Liberty play yes, not once? Yeah, what happened? I haven't seen it for 40 years. Maybe we should work that in. What do you think, like, coach? That's why I love Jerry maybe, Jones. Maybe we should run the damn triple option. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Wishbone. Yeah. No one's, no one's ran the wishbone in the other for 40 like, years. You're like not? a novice. You just got the money. You sit in a room, and you have legitimate football men around you, <laughs> and you're asking dumb questions like that, and their heads explode. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. But that's also why I love Jerry Jones. Because 40 years later, he still acts like a fan. Yes. And I love that about him. 100%. And look, I, I don't know how this is going to play itself out. The Cowboys are a very good football team this year. And if Dak has a good year, Trey Lance is an afterthought. He only becomes a story if Dak Prescott struggles because he's sitting there and someone will go on TV or on the radio or at the game going, why is Trey Lance here? Why is Cooper Rush here? Play him. It's all on Dak's performance. And based on last year, there's a good chance by October 1st we're having those conversations. 100%. Coming up. We got the five questions everybody needs an answer to before this NFL season starts, and we'll give it to you right after this. All right, time for your NFL burning questions Ooh. as we move closer to the start of the season. Uh, it has come out that uh, Ron Rivera learned that Sam Howell was a good quarterback because his <laughs> wife told him. <laughs> True story that he and his wife were talking, as husbands and wives do uh, in most homes around the country, and she just kept bringing up the quarterback. And he goes, at some point, he's like, what quarterback? 
are you talking about? And she's like, Sam Howell. Who? He looks pretty good. Who? <laughs> so, Who? So the question is, should Mrs. Rivera become the new general manager? <laughs> Maybe not Washington general manager, but some sort of coaching position, I think, is, is, is fine. Maybe quarterback coach, the same yeah. quarterback coach. Maybe, that, maybe. And by the way, that's a true story. Ron Rivera had no idea that Sam Howell was a good quarterback. His wife kept asking him about the quarterback. That's, wait, that's a true statement. We'll find out this year. We'll find out this year. <laughs> she works in recruiting. In, yeah. in our world, Jacoby's wife told me he looked hot on yesterday's show. So Ooh. you can't believe can't everything. Always, can't always trust your spouse. <laughs> can't always trust your spouse. <laughs> All right. Good. Number two, can Dak Prescott lead the Cowboys to the Super Bowl? Defense can. Yeah, but that's not the question. <laughs> that's just to can no, Dak Prescott. No. Can. The defense is good enough for the Cowboys to I win the Super no, Bowl, yeah? I say no, defense can. All right. So now how about you, Jacobs? I'm going to say no. Um, I really feel like, forget the Trey Lance thing, I think that's insignificant in terms of Dak, but it just feels like one of those things that there's a reason that he's only won two playoff games. Yeah. And there's a reason that when when it gets down to it, he can't get it done. He hasn't been past the, what, the, he's never been to the Never been to the conference championship. Never been to the MC championship nope. his whole entire life. And there's a pattern to this. Which, by the way, an a, a lot of guys have never been to an NFC or AFC championship game. Oh, with the fair. expectations that he's had year after year. Oh, I'm going to surprise you. I think he can. I think Dak Prescott can play well enough for the Dallas Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl. And if you, if you take San Fran and Philly and acknowledge that they're the best teams yes. on paper over here, I think the Cowboys are in the conversation as far as the next tier of teams that are competing with those two teams. And I think Dak Prescott has it. I just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. But I, I, if you told me the Dallas Cowboys are in the NFC Championship game this year, it would not shock me because no. they're a very good football yeah. team. All right, next one. Did uh, I'll go with Aaron Rodgers here. Is the hype around Aaron Rodgers and the Jets legitimate? My answer is it's not hype, it's facts. <laughs> it's but you guys can go on that one. Go ahead. Yes, the hype. I think the That's hype is guy. real. Nice. 100%. I, I, you, got, you add a guy like Aaron Rodgers, not only that, now you add Dalvin Cook into that mix. You got young receivers around you. The hype is real. And everyone's forgetting the that the hype comes along with the defense. The defense. Yes. the defense is going to be the best defense in the history of football this year. Okay, <laughs> They're going to be one of the top three defenses in the league this year. And the hype around Aaron Rodgers is, this happens to me a lot. When you watch Hard Knocks, you kind of buy in. Hard and Knocks. I'm 100% bought, bought in on Aaron Rodgers on this team. Yeah. The leadership, bringing everybody in. And when you say young receivers, he's got young receivers, but he's also got – Older receivers like Randall yeah. Cobb and Lazard, guys he's played for, played with before that he trusts. And you've got Garrett Wilson, you've got Hall and Dalvin Cook in the in the in the backfield. I mean, this team has everything that you need to make a Super yeah. Bowl. And to be 100%. fair, the biggest question, and I want to, you can't just sugarcoat. It's a legitimate question: is how good or bad is the offensive line going to be? You know, Dwayne Brown comes back; he hasn't really practiced at all to be their starting left tackle. Ten years ago, he was a pro bowler. You've got Mekhi Beck, who's been a major disappointment at right tackle. That's the question mark. If those guys are solid, the Jets might not lose a game. So the hype is real. All right. <laughs> they're going to lose a game. Hype is real, They're going to lose week so one to the Bills. No, they're not. They're not. That's a guaranteed W. All right. Uh, <laughs> next one. Did the Kansas City Chiefs do enough this offseason to remain the best team in the NFL? I just don't doubt the Kansas City Chiefs. The answer to the question is no, but yes. Because I've, I've doubted the Chiefs year after year after year, even last year, because of losing Tyreek Hill. And it just does not make a difference for this team if they have Mahomes and they have Kelsey and they have Andy Reid. Yeah. They have a shot. It's just that simple. So, so no. No, yes, but no. No, but yes. No. I'm going no, yes on that. Crow? No, I, I still don't think they did enough. I, I uh, agree with to you. be the best team. Yeah, in first off, nobody's repeated since three four. So you're talking about twenty years without a repeat champion. There's a reason for that. It's really hard to win a 100%. Super Bowl. And this team doesn't acquire talent. They don't. They just uh, figure we got Mahomes, we'll be good. I think they made a mistake in doing that. You still have a sign, Chris Jones. And you? Chris Jones is unsigned as well, so I'm with you on that. All right, next question for you. Is Derek Carr? The answer for the New Orleans Saints to make a run into the playoffs. We shall find out. Then the week is the division uh, in, in NFL, so we shall. Find Let me just walk you through this game. Yes. See, it's you either say yes, yes. or no. Yes. My bad. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I yes. like it. Derek Carr is not the answer, but he's also not the problem, right? I mean, if you look at yes since no <laughs> yes, 
The like, answer is <laughs> no, it's not the answer. That's how I started it. Derek Carr is not the answer. That's the, that's the answer is no. That's he's not that. the answer. But he's not the problem. He's not Jameis Winston, yeah. and he's not Taysom Hill. He's yeah. not as much fun to watch as those two quarterbacks. True. But he's not going to be the problem. Since Drew Brees, they have just been – very bad at that position. Yeah. And now they have Derek Carr, and they're in a bad division. They will the be in the playoffs. But the question was not, is Derek Carr the problem? The question was, is, he's is not Derek the Carr answer. the answer? He's not the answer. He's not the answer. He's, he's not the answer. But, but he's also not the problem. <laughs> I mean, sorry for being so <laughs> no, no, articulate I, and specific. I thought it was a simple game. Giving the audience a very here. simple answer. Just yes or no. But Okay. <laughs> five, Let's five, just answer yes one. the yes Next one we answer the, one word. The final burning question. Uh, uh, what is the dark horse team that you guys have in your back pocket that can make a run to the Super Bowl? Crow, you go first. Seahawks. 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 Nice. Okay. Why Seahawks? I thought I was giving one word answers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yes, yes. yes. We'll, we'll explain it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Chargers. Chargers. Why? I got the Cleveland Browns. Oh. Again, tomorrow, perhaps we'll walk <laughs> the, 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 the whys of it all. <laughs> but, but, you know, right now we're trying to stick to the script and the rules according to Craig Carton. All right. It's the Carton show. As we do, we end every show off with a little segment we call Like It or Spike It. Let me start off with an Iowa State football player trying to uh, set a block on the back end for his uh, <laughs> offense. And, Ooh, oh, like it. Yeah. Love it. Like it. He, look, yeah. Did his man make the play? No. He didn't need it's a great block. It's a great block. Yeah. I um, sacrificed they, his body. I think they got the first down on that run, but my man got, got healed. It, it feels like he was thinking <laughs> about something else laughing right. across the formation. And before we get out of here, uh, like it or spike it, my guy Antonio Cromartie reached out to me yesterday. He was trying to find oxtails in New York City. <laughs> Well, I think you have a strip club for that, no? No, no. No, no. <laughs> no, no that's not how that works. That's did not you, how that works. Did you find the oxtail? Gotta go oh, to Brooklyn. Man. Gotta go to Brooklyn. Gotta go to Brooklyn. Gotta go to Brooklyn. We'll bring you some oxtail for breakfast tomorrow. I'm all for it. That's Antonio Cromartie. That's David Jacoby. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching.